Today's podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the number one ticket app, ticket site, the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier to ever easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. They crack the code on how to score deals on a last minute. You can find Major League Baseball tickets for under $15 all on game time. They gave us tickets to a lot of different games, man. Most recently, we went to a Yankees game. Fun as hell. Billy missed us catching the ball. Avery dropped the ball on catching the ball. Sorry about the Avery, I man. Did. I personally enjoy how quick and easy it is to maintain. And it's a great interface. It's easy to work, even for me. I mean, I'm a little older, younger than y'all. So download the Game Time app. Go to account tab to create login and redeem code macro for $20 off your first purchase terms apply download game time for last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed welcome back everybody to macro dosing the only podcast on the internet i am your main host because once again pft is off doing other things less important than this and we got some special guests in the studio today we uh we got most everybody here billy's um billy's holding Holding PFT's pocket wherever he's at, oh, and uh, so we we got Big T in the studio. <laughs> we got Big T in the studio. We got Avery. We got Mad Dog, and we got we got Large is a returning guest, and we got KB. 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 Thanks back. for having right. me. No doubt, man. No doubt. So uh, how's everybody doing, man? A little tap in. How's everybody doing? How's everybody feeling? I good? feel fantastic. I, I want to start first. I feel good. I look good. You know what I mean? 50 years old and down like maybe like 12 pounds, right? You're growing. I'm starting. Yeah, I'm starting. You to were, we were at the Pop Punk concert and you, you were way taller than I remember you. It was crazy how big I felt at that fucking concert. Everybody was so small oh, yeah. and so young. And so PFT co commented like even on Twitter, large was the easily the easiest recognizable person in a crowd of 300 white people like you know it wasn't like a lot of differentiation <laughs> like and mm -hmm. i just felt like i was fucking making eye contact with them the whole time so yeah maybe i'm not that small i'm big You're like motherfucker. Jeez. Yeah, yeah i went to how, a, uh, how, how, how was the did you go to the concert big team i didn't go to that one but i was going to say i've been to concerts and venues like that where everybody's standing up and it's a small room and like I feel like I'm just like, I don't want to look at the person like in the eye because I know they're just like, they see me. Like, even if you don't want to, right. I'm a head taller than everybody. So it's, I don't like those kind of uh, situations. I think the lights off True the bald head show. for you guys. Yeah. yeah. That must suck. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, that ever happened to you, KB? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of the, well, when I go to like the NCAA wrestling tournament, that's the only time I feel like a above yeah. average height man. <laughs> that's about it. What's the general opinion on Billy in this podcast community? We, we like uh, in the community or, or the, the no this pot this uh, the <laughs> macro dosing family. Uh, Billy's like um, it, we all love him, right? We all love him, uh -huh. but he's like um, you gotta you gotta keep him on a leash, as PFT always likes to say. He 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 ventures off, and you gotta take him back. Sometimes his his facts come from odd places so you gotta you gotta you gotta yeah. check him every now and there but now nah, he good people man everybody loves well he got man. on stage and performed a song we saw yeah, that he, springsteen he, he did the snippet here and then that's what i guess did that that was the audition and then pft said sign him up so i guess he did it he did it <laughs> i saw a clip of that shit that's <laughs> that's that's one of the definitions of two americas i don't think i've ever heard that song before everybody was, was it was it though. born to run yeah yeah born to run mm -hmm. who, who sangs the original Bruce, Bruce Springsteen. Springsteen. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I've heard some of his songs. Definitely have. Yeah, for sure. How you feeling, Big T? You good, man? Anything? Any news pop up? I am I am precisely fine. I am exactly just, average. Yeah. I am just doing whelmed. fine. Yeah. Just just whelmed. There, I seen this I seen this video of some girl asked his daughter uh, asked his dad. She's like, How are you feeling? He's like, whelmed. She's like, What do you mean whelmed? He's like, just whelmed. He's He's like, you can't be whelmed. You're either overwhelmed or underwhelmed. He's like, no, you need a, you need a metric as to what you're right. No, I like that guy. Over, yeah, I'm, I'm, over or under. He's like, mm -hmm. I'm whelmed. I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> I like it. Big T is whelmed. Well, uh, I had a dope little weekend, man. I had uh, I entered a, a, a Valorant tournament, which is a game. If y'all ain't familiar, but it's a Valorant. So it's my first esports tournament. That shit was fun, man. Don't. That did, shit, do you have like a like a name you go by that's not your don't they usually have like 
nicknames? X Clan Fire or something like. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, I, I wasn't in the class. Just dude, this just invited me. So you like you get a group of teams together and you just compete against other people in the country. And so uh, we didn't have like no team name, but my name was Beans. That's my name on Valorant. Is Beans. Beans. Yeah, Beans. I don't know Perks. where it came from. You ever just, seen Even Stevens? Not that, not that kind of Bean. Not no. that kind of Bean. No. Uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> No, what's even Stevens? Uh, it's a two Americas thing. You would have never seen that show. <laughs> but there's yeah, but there's a kid on it Steven named Steven Anthony Lawrence. He looks like he's named Beans. <laughs> what did you have to pay? To, what is it for money? This tournament? Yeah, winter, winter got like two thousand bucks. But like it's um, so you you play against like I don't know, it was like forty or fifty teams or something like that, and uh, we didn't make the cut. Um, but they had some killers in the tournament though. Like so, like we had one. Y'all probably don't notice, but there's a radiant. They call it a radiant. That's like if you're a radiant, like you're pro level. We had one guy like that on our team, and the rest of us were just I was the lowest level, but you know, I, I played okay. But then we played against one team that had a fucking coach and shit. Like, so there was like real teams. Like oh, Yeah, it's it's a little much. Yeah, super fucking nerdy. But it was fun. I had the whole fan there and shit, eating hot dogs and shit. It was fun as hell, man. But um Oh, this was at it wasn't at your home? You had to go to a no, tournament? No, it was it was at a place. It was at a place. Oh that shit, that's official. Set up. Yeah. Do you have had, like jerseys? Nah, it's, nah, I'm not that I wasn't that into it. Like I would have wore it though. If they'd had it, hell yeah, with beans on it, that should have been lit. That would have been fun as hell, man. Be some good merch in the Barstool store, potentially. That's that's facts. That's facts. Oh, speaking of which, we got some uh go ahead, plug that, Maddie. It's still how's the how's the merch doing? Got the Macrodosian. Finally, got the Macrodosian uh, merch in that in that, in, that, in the store. I've been I've been banging that for a while, man. You guys so, got the best merch at Barstool, I think. That's facts. Mad I mean, dog. When is it launching? I'm always the tenth. Yeah, Wednesday the tenth. There's good shit in there. Space is fake. Uh, don't swim in Lake Lanier. Jake Malisek was wearing that one today. That's always a good reminder. There's there's some good designs in there. I don't want to give them all away, but it's great merch. It's the best line we've done so far. And it's all comfort colors. So if anyone was concerned about the quality. Great t-shirts. My Aaron, girl already jacked mine. Aaron, can uh, I ask you a question? I used to I used to do a radio show with Willie Colon. Big guy used to play for the uh Jets and the um and the Steelers, one of Super Bowl Steelers. And I used mm -hmm. to piss him off when they called these professional gamers athletes. Like I said, I think I, I'm looking at the thing that you were at. If it was the VCT last chance qualifier where Shroud won, oh, when you look that, no, 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 like, that they, not, they're, they're, they're pro one? gamers. Okay, yeah, they're pro gamers. I was just like on some little, you know, okay. local tournament. You consider these kids athletes? These yeah. gamers? Oh, do you? I do. Yeah, okay. I do. Um, I know a lot of people, older cats, take issue with that. I don't, but I, and people that that take issue with it, I always ask them like, what's your definition of athlete? And then you have to do, like, you have to do a physical activity, usually is the answer or response. I'm like, well, hand-eye coordination is, is is a physical activity. And then they're like, well, what do you consider? Like, it just gets in a very nuanced, subjective conversation, but it's they're athletes. They're performing something at a very high level that not many people can do. It takes time, it takes skill, like baseball, like baseball or golf, right? It's not, like the physical exertion is not strenuous mm -hmm. but it's very tactical it's very um uh detail oriented and you have to you have to stay on that shit or else you're not very good at it and i i view esports the same way and when you look at something like i think it's league of legends i believe it is that's like one of the most viewed events in the world i'm talking mm -hmm. about super bowls i'm talking about world cups i'm talking about it's like one of the most i think it might have passed the super bowl actually for the most viewed event yeah. so it's like What's our metric? I, I say they are. I say they're athletes. Uh, Large, what's your take? You know, I went, I've, I've always thought that they were athletes. I've had a looser definition, but I thought maybe a guy who, you know, reached the highest level in the sport that he played, like Arian, and has sustained so many injuries, right? Beat the shit out of your body to the point, you know, and, and especially with Willie. You ever walk down the stairs in front of him? It's like that scene in Indiana Jones where the ball's coming at him. You just know he's going to fall on you. So I just yeah. don't see that happening with these guys having sometimes too much Mountain Dew. I went to go see professional darts <laughs> in Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And I was blown away at the athleticism of guys who are built just like me. Just that pendulum 
for three hours throwing darts and being pinpoint, you know, like hitting a triple 20. Do you think that's more athletic than having to learn all the controls and the of a I think video so. game? And again, I do believe that they're athletes. I'm not shitting mm-hmm. on them at all. And I'm even though I'm the oldest guy in the world. I'm not shitting on them at all. But I think, you know, there are degrees to this shit. And so, mm-hmm. you know, just like you rank anything. So um, dart players are better athletes than professional gamers. That's my hot take. It's more of a skill. Yeah. Oh, oh, you th- okay. I, I think, think so. gaming I- is more of a skill than s- okay. traditional sports, but it's not a sport. Well, when you say athletes, like, that's when you get into the nuanced conversation. Like when you say athletes, like they're better athletes. Mm. Like it's hard to, that's hard to gauge, right? So like if you was to ask, like what's a better athlete, like a point guard or an NFL cornerback, right? Like that way like, you can gauge different skill sets. Like, these skill sets are very specific. So it's like hard to, Mm. gauge like I, I would just say they, they're skilled in their genre I, I'm not sure I would say mm-hmm. they're better athletes but they're skilled in their genre you know what I mean I don't know though yeah it's a, it's a debate to be had semantics I think a, like a, a very good lumberjack is a better athlete than a lot of pro athletes I'll take it the that's, lumberjack that's games are someone that's who can a, build a, a shed high, very a well <laughs> I mean that takes more like using an axe right so so when I think of athlete, I think of somebody who can do all things, right? Look like a Jim Thorpe type. Like so you can play and do things at a very high level in different skill sets. And so I, I wouldn't say lumberjacks are better athletes than pro athletes. Eh, nah. Maybe some. Let me ask you something about Jim Thorpe. Nah. So they just gave him back his Olympic medals. So he won that, yeah. he won the Olympic medals, then they were take taken away from him because he played minor league baseball. He was getting paid like Two dollars a game or thirty-five dollars a week. This minor, so they took away his medals. A hundred yeah. years later, they gave it back to him. Sixty years That's afterwards, crazy. they let him share it with the other guys. The the guy who actually yeah. was second place in the decathlon didn't want to accept it because he knew how much of a better athlete uh, Thorpe was than him. You think that he should have gotten him back? It was the Native American community which went nuts about it, you know, because he was the first Native American to ever win Olympic gold, mm-hmm. and he won pentathlon and decathlon. Or do you think they made an exception for him and he shouldn't have? Because he did get paid to play. I don't I don't know enough about them rules. No. Um I don't see unless his community is like lobbying for it, I don't see the point of getting dead people awards. Yeah, that's true. At all. I don't I don't that's But also that's taking shit idea. away in the first place is like the dumbest thing we do in sports. Silly. Like that's the true. NCAA like like Louisville won the basketball national title in like thirteen or whatever. And they're, oh, we took it away, you didn't win there. Okay. Oh, we didn't win. Like it's not like people forget. Like right. they won it. It's yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, yeah, I, every right. time they're like, we're vacating wins. Like okay. But sometimes a medal, like they take it off your neck, and if somebody, I want to go medal, be like, oh, show it to me. Be like, I can't. I can take it away. Like that's yeah. something. It does. Su- like yeah, Reggie yeah. Bush doesn't have his Heisman. Right. That he they, he was he was actually on my podcast and I asked him about that. He they didn't even take it. Like he gave he it gave to it them. back. Yeah. Oh, really? And I was like, I was like, dog, why did you give it to him? He was like, I just, you know, I, he was trying to portray that like, he he did, he just didn't want any funk. And I'm like, but you won the shit. Like everybody knows you was the best player in the nation at that time. Like what is the point? Like they had to come. I told him, they didn't had to come to my house. Like come get it. <laughs> Matter of fact, they tried to do some stupid shit like that with me. They called me. I think I've told this story before, but they called me. Um, after I did the, um, there was this documentary called School, The Price of Sports. Uh, and I said that I took money under the table, um, just like everybody did. But I, I, it was more prevalent back then that people admitted it, or more not prevalent that people admitted it. So anyway, they called me and they was like, uh, uh, we're conducting an investigation um, for you taking illegal benefits. And like, do you want to comply? And I was like, no, nah, but good luck, man. Was this, <laughs> was this UT or the NCAA? It's the NCAA. UT don't give a fuck. But that's the thing, though, is like, what, like, what would they have taken? They wouldn't even taken what wins for. Like, what does it mean? Yeah, you took the wins. Like, what does it mean you took his Heisman? Like, we, we this isn't 1930 where we had heard stories about Jim Thorpe. Like, yo, there's film of Reggie Bush dogging folks. <laughs> what the fuck? What is the point of taking that shit? It just didn't make any sense to me. Speaking of the NCAA, KB uh, is the guy who had the take last week that we discussed. So I figured you might want to talk to him about that. Yeah, clear that clear that shit up real quick because you know I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Yeah, my take was that football 
D1 football players don't deserve 85 scholarships, especially if other sports programs are getting significantly less, like baseball is 11. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it was, I, when I originally presented it, it was I was. <clears throat> I'm not that passionate about it, but you, when you're right. on a, like a podcast or a show, you have to be in it. You have to have an extremist take. So I was a little. I presented myself as angry about it, but I'm not. Yeah. I just don't think like a third string football player should get a full ride to never compete when other starters are aren't getting scholarships. But um, why? <laughs> what if if you could give every athlete a scholarship? I'm a proponent of that but oh okay w- but yeah. why but wh- but why do you think like a, why why does a practice squad guy who's never going to see the field or make any money for his team why does he deserve a full ride if like a a starting shortstop doesn't get a scholarship uh fusion so i'm also a proponent of free college so i don't think that we should yeah but if you're going to like divvy them yeah. out or yeah. limit under them, this free college this for everybody system, free co- everybody Oh, you should get that pass Everybody. quick. I'm mm-hmm. dropping my kid Everybody. off this Wednesday. Oh, yeah. I love that I'm shit doing, to go through. I, I, I'm get doing loud. my best, man. Get loud. Get <laughs> I'm loud. doing my best. Um, uh, but under our system, under our economic system, right, it's 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 just a doggy dog world under our capitalistic economy. Uh, I get it from a business that standpoint. That's, just, like, that's what it is. So, yeah. that's. I mean, that's what it, and And also, like, you grinded four years or however many years you played your sport in high school to earn that scholarship. And so you played well enough in somebody else's eyes to feel like that right. you would add value to their team. Whether or not you add value to the team is the, is the gamble and the risk that the university takes, but um, they shouldn't take it away. I think there's a lot of deserving scholarship now. athletes who go, to, who, who go to Alabama to be a third string because they'd rather do that than start at a mid, mid-major. And now there's no parity in college football. Maybe, maybe, but also some people use uh, s- sport scholarships as a conduit to further their education. So, like one of my buddies who didn't play that well, um, didn't play a lot, um, is now a medical doctor, and so yeah. practicing, like he's doing his thing. Yeah. And so he he didn't play much, but he used his talent. So it's like, why why take that away? I'd also say yeah. if you if you told schools instead of football gets 85, baseball gets 11.7, wrestling gets X, whatever, if you said all your scholarships are in a pool, you, and obviously you can't do this because of Title IX and all sorts of other things, but if you said you get 400 scholarships for all sports, whatever, yeah, football would actually get more than they're getting now. Football would probably have like 120. Based on what? Football is the in. is the only sport. Football and men's basketball are the only sports that make money. So those sport men's basketball pretty much already has the whole team on full scholarship, but football would have the entire team on full scholarship. But what is like uh, someone who doesn't get on the field? What is what money is he making, or is it just to better the team as a whole? Yeah, I mean you don't know when oh, yeah. you, when I mean, you're I, gonna yeah, need from, people. Yeah, from, like, if you do, and also if coming you treat out of it like school, a business, then yeah, then there would then, then, it is. then it like is a a, well that that's what I'm saying. Then by that logic, then. Um, like a, a field hockey player or uh, a wrestler or a soccer player deserves zero. Yeah, now you're talking. I don't. I don't. Or any I think athlete. a lot. Yeah, so I'm saying. Yeah, talking. right. Any field hockey athlete, yeah. right? Any, I don't not, believe they're not that. But I'm any saying, money. if you it told like the you schools, it. it sounds if like you football and schools. basketball are the only sports that make money. I mean, that's that's yeah. true. Right. So by that logic, and they don't then, make money at every school. It's it's not right. It's not every school. Yeah, but does but an elite practice squad create an elite t- first I mean, string team? Also, is. you know what I mean. Uh, I mean, it, 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 can, it can, but also can like help. there are plenty of four stars at Alabama who are on scholarship who have never played. That's what I'm saying. If you mm. reduce those scholarships, that player will go to Troy or oh, yeah. I don't know the but, Citadel, but, and but now you're limiting. And that now you have better. Options. Now you have more. Uh, yeah, I, I guess you said you're I don't limiting know. that person's options. Yeah, I think it'd be better. I mean, I I, I agree. I, I don't like the current system, but under the system, this is just a byproduct of it. It's just it, it is what it is. It's doggy dog. And so we have created things that make it a more evil and fair playing field. But that bubble's going to burst sooner or later when you start talking about. Because you said, well, if you treat it like a business, then yeah, well, it is a business. Yeah, We're yeah. just 
slowly coming around to it, kind of waking up to it. Now we're they're allowed to make money off their name, woohoo! But you're still not paying them for what they what they're producing. Right. It's, it's just uh, we're we're slow we're slow to it as 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 usual, man. Also, I think nil is helping with a lot of that. Because you can, while while baseball has 11.7 scholarships, schools that care about baseball enough can say, well, you're not on scholarship, but we'll take care of it. Right. So, I mean, if you have, you know, a school that cares about is like an elite women's soccer program and they want that program to do well, they can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Marshall. uh, Marshall who? They won the men's soccer championship. Oh. Shout yeah. out to the Marshall men's soccer. I was yeah. surprised. I was like, "This is." I didn't know they had soccer stars. Tonington, West Virginia. Was that Conference USA? I believe hey, I saw this. No, team. Marshall's in the MAC. No, hell no. What oh, the wait, fuck I'm are stupid. you talking? They used to. Shut be, I, think the they, I think. They, I think they used to be. <laughs> hold on, shut the they, hell. Hold on, didn't they used to be? <laughs> I don't. I don't think. I don't know. They played Miami all the time. Yeah, I think they maybe. Arian, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm I vaguely remember them. They may have been. I mean, I could be I could be wrong. <laughs> Autumn shits. Uh, uh, they they don't matter. Yeah. Slightly on subject, slightly off subject. I saw this take a while ago, and we talked about it lightly. I was like, but I want to get y'all's perspective on it. Do you think that the WNBA should lower the rims? Yeah. Yes. I think they should do anything. Like anything to make that <laughs> yeah. shit more into it. They want to make the balls even smaller so everybody's palming in. If they want to lower the right. rims, if they want to put in just fucking slam ball yeah. courts. Treat it like a business, make it more entertaining to the consumer. It's not working right now. I mean, it's, you know, I'm not saying have I, them play topless, but I'm saying do something no, that's be, big. I, yeah, wow. uh, no, hey, I, I take that I'm, back. I'm, but you know what I'm saying? No, no, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean I'm selectively. Yeah, they don't want me to There's a market for that. What's crazy is there's, um, there's a I'm not an advocate for that, but there's there is a league. I think it's like um, it's a football league. It's a women's football league where they have them playing like extremely short dresses and shit like that, which is it's just wild, but it's still not going to be as entertaining. I just don't think <clears throat> women's basketball is all that entertaining. Uh, and and I think it's the reason it's, it's the athleticism difference. And I'll. I'm probably in the minority. Well, maybe I'm not. I don't know. Aaron, it's, it's hard just, to verbalize this <laughs> correctly. I know what you mean. Well, no, I, I mean, I don't really give a shit. Yeah. Like, it's just not entertaining. Like I would it's love for it to be. That. I have many friends who have played in WNBA, and they probably hate that take. I don't know if ever they've heard it from me, but it's just not that entertaining. And I think yeah. they got to do something. Like I think Laura and the Rims will be fire. Like to see them dunking on each other, that would be dope. But it's just like that. Like you said, yeah. they already play with smaller balls. I think the three point line is shorter. Uh, they play less games. Um, so there's already like to try to juxtapose it against the NBA. It's just not, you're not already not doing it. So why not take it to the step where people watch basketball for shit like that? Does that travel um, then to the collegiate game then? Like if the WNBA, which is the top of the food chain for girl basketball players, I mean, I think that's safe to assume. Does college then drop it a foot too? When Colleg- do you think it has? I mean, it has to, right? It should be proportional to right? the average height. Like, so take the average height of a male basketball player and do that to the rim of a, I don't know. Right. But well, yeah, the yeah. average women's basketball player is probably like f- six foot, 5'11". Yeah, 5'10". I don't know. Ten, I don't know. And the average ba- men's is probably like 6'5". Lower it six inches. What is it? Big T, you, you Googling that? I'm trying to find average WNBA. I, I, yeah, the average player in the NBA is probably 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, uh, the average height of a WNBA player is around six feet tall. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cause is it at ten feet right now for WNBA? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's so drop feet. it six, drop it six inches. But the balls are smaller. But the balls are so smaller, right? Like, yeah. you I would say f- drop it a foot. You don't. Yeah, you would think That'd if you dope. you made the ball smaller, you'd also. <laughs> yeah. That's a grinder. Like, I don't know years. who is dunking in the WNBA. Like how many women? I I'm it's like with three I believe or four, maybe. There oh, there's are like, only three or four total. One of them's yeah. in prison. Yeah. yeah, one of them's in Russia. Yeah. Oh shit! Oh yeah, she just got nine years, huh? Nine yeah. Years, oh yeah. yeah, we didn't talk. She'll be pumped Yo. when she gets out if it's a foot lower. As oh, of God. as of October second, twenty twenty, there had been twenty seven dunks in the history of the WNBA. Oh, okay, and yeah, lower that. And what's even more? Not dunkers, <laughs> dunks, dunks total. <laughs> but saying, imagine and catching one. Imagine going to a game and seeing. I know. One. The, I saw a stat uh, that said. Uh, 
I think Candace Parker had got a triple double. Shout out to Candace Parker. That's my homegirl. Mm-hmm. But it was like the third of her career or something like that, or the third total or something like that. It was something wild. Like where it was just like the third total where it's just like, uh, I'm trying to be an advocate here, man, but <laughs> it just is what it is. Like I went to my little daughter's basketball game. Uh, it's per- Bruh. They can't play. But that's Bruh. just kids in general. Yeah, that's tough. Nah, no. dog. It's not because my <laughs> son was that age. You know what I mean? I'm talking about, we're talking about five points total. Yeah. We're talking, we're talking yeah. about five points. There was no ballers on that team. And I love my daughter, Def. <laughs> she's just not very athletic. And she knows it. She's just out there because her friend is out there. But it's like, I don't know. I think the standard in which we measure women's sports is just not the same. And it's also, I think, coaching is different. Like, like imagine coaching a little girl's team. You coach them differently. Like, I whole, do. Whole, I coach my boys in basketball. And my daughter's the youngest, and I coach her in basketball too. And the the level of play is terrible at the same ages. I mean, there's always those outliers, but um, it's rough to watch. It's rough to sit there and an hour later walk out and the score was 5 3. You know, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's it gets, uh, I just wonder, like, since like Tennessee is also an outlier, but like I remember when I was in college, the only way they got people to go see collegiate basketball is the football team would do dunk contests at halftime. And that would bring it in. So it'd be like, you know, Ricky Damn. Waters and Demetrius DeBose would all of a sudden be throwing it down. People would be like, yeah. And then no one would be there for the second half. And you went to a big you went to a big sports school. You went to Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah. But I mean you couldn't you couldn't get people to go to girls' basketball. At the time, we've gotten a lot better. Again, I'm very old, but we've gotten a lot better since then and we've been competitive as opposed to Tennessee, which has been steadily you know, UConn, Tennessee and all those right. programs. So I wonder, like, Tennessee, the girls team would probably say no to dropping it a foot. I think the traditionalist. I think they all do. Like Jack said that to Candace Parker on, I think it was like uh, TNT or something like that. And she was like, nah, hell no. Nah. What are you talking about? Like she was like hella defensive and saying, right. my daughter's going to be drop step jumping or dunking and yada, yada, yada. And I'm just like, but then they should also Hi. say, well, what they shouldn't want to play with a smaller ball. Right. That's my thing. If it's, if it's all equal, then make everything. Equal. Also, I have to read this stat. Brittany Griner has 23 career dunks in the WNBA. The rest of wait, the wait. WNBA. And there's 27 that's, total? Just, the rest of the WNBA has accounted for three regular season dunks in the league's 25 seasons. That's, I believe Candace Parker was, was one, one of them. them. She might have been the first. Yeah. yeah. No, what's, I thought it was Shell Swoops. I'm sure there was somebody know. before her, but I know Candace Parker did. She did it at Tennessee. Oh, okay. Uh... But yeah, so it's all Brittany Griner and three others. That was as of uh, September of last year. And you got to drop it till she gets out of the clink, at least. Give the other girls a chance, right? That's wild. So real quick, imagine her on, her on so, the lower rim. So she's in Russian prison for nine years for having a vape pen. Am, am I getting that right? Yeah, but the whole thing is that, she, like, they. If I'm not wrong, they're using her as like political pawn and then they're going to. Well, I know that, but they said it at nine years because they had to sentence her in order to trade her. Yeah, she's only in there as long as until as, we give them what they want. Yeah, until we give them like the merchant of death or whatever. Yeah, well, they, they want, want more skills. than that. Yeah. yeah. Like that's so scary. Yeah. That that Wild. also that's so scary that that man that man is in America right now, even mm. if he's in a maximum security. Well, not prison. much longer. Yeah. I think Griner could escape if she tried. Where she? Well, but she's she'd be so easy to spot. Yeah, she could do it. I feel like Russian prison <laughs> is probably tougher to escape than here. Now, well, now we got to get her to escape. Now, now all I can think about in Russian prison is like Stranger Things and Hopper and Stranger Things. Which no no spoilers, Arian. No spoilers. I just finished season three, dog. Oh shit. Okay, so okay. How'd you like three? That shit was lit. If you like yeah, three, gets, you'll really you'll like love four. four. It gets a little. There's a, like there's a, there's one part where I don't know if this is spoiler. It's, it's a spoiler. It's been out for like three it's years. It's been out for yeah. where the what the monster grabs the the, the radio and goes raw. I'm like come on, kid. Like <laughs> she was kind of weak. I don't know if you remember that part. Yeah, but I just saw it last night. But it was it was kind of lame. But other than that, it, it was it was it was straight. I enjoyed it, man. I enjoyed it. I cannot stand like with a passion, Mike. Mike is fucking annoying, though. I don't hate oh. that take. God, Mike is annoying, though. 
I've never. He's like, he reminds me of Jesse on Breaking Bad. I didn't see Breaking Bad. Oh. Horrible, horrible character. Oh my God. He is kind of a so, little bit of a dick. He's like a 15 year old dick. He's just a crybaby, dog. He's just a little crybaby. And just the way, even the way he talked to his mom, mom would try to give him breakfast. She works, she goes to work every single day. She knocks on your door and says, She made you breakfast. Mom! Not right now. Like, shut your little ass up, man. Come eat the breakfast. I can't stand that little kid, man. Ugh. Shout out to him, though. You're definitely not going to like him in season four, then. He doesn't get any more likable. Well, TV shows love breakfast. Right. They love showing breakfast scenes. And the kid, they, no one ever eats the breakfast. They always, they're always in a rush. They take one bite, then leave. It's a great observation. It is. <laughs> Fucking Brett, what's up? Yeah. That's true. Huh? Yeah. Why the Shit. fuck do we hate breakfast? You guys agree? Yeah. <laughs> that was a good observation. <laughs> Scholarship take was trash, but the breakfast take, breakfast take is not on. Yeah. If you guys get a chance, check out the Black Dolphin Prison. Don't go to it. There's a Black Dolphin <laughs> Prison in Russia. I did Twisted History of Prisons once, and uh, one Russian inmate had carved a black dolphin, like a statue of it, so they put it out in front of this prison, but it's the most uh, ruthless prison in all of Russia. Like when they take you from your cell to anywhere, they put your head below your waist and your arms above your, like your hands above your shoulders. So you're naturally cocked over. So you can't see from side to side or they put back, like there is no chance of escaping because you never have any kind of idea of what's around you. And it's only people there or only people who are serving like life in prison. It's the lowest of the low. You wind up in the Black Dolphin in fucking Russia. It's like, not Northern yeah. Russia. It's yeah. somehow, amazingly, it's like Southwestern Russia. I read about some of the sons of bitches that are there, like all those guys with the epaulette tattoos. Like, is that like the Caucasus Mountains or? I don't know. Uh, uh, oh, that's you with your fucking, when you know something from a picture, right? That uh, yeah. that geography shit. No, it's, um, but it's, yeah, so the Black Dolphin, it's, it's it's bad. I'm watching a video of this place right now. They do not fuck around. They don't. Anyway, it's it's still operating. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Have you seen the Madagascar prisons? No. They're like the worst conditions in the world. Oh, oh, uh, with overcrowding there's something yourself. on YouTube. Yeah, and it's ter they're treated like worse than slaves. Yeah. Twisted History of Prisons was a fire episode too because they have the strings that go across and you sleep over ropes. Do you know what I mean? Because there's not enough room for people to lay uh, downs and shit like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, this one still has 700 criminals in it, including child molesters, murderers, terrorists, cannibals, and serial killers. Cannibals. And Brittany Griner, cannibals. she just showed up. Yeah, yeah. And Griner. Griner. <laughs> she's she's no, no, Black no. Imagine she's like, Black 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 oh. Oh. Holy shit. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. Is she, is she in like, a, she's not in like a max security prison, though, right? She's not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like, you never know, right? Yeah. Also, I don't know like th the difference in max security in Russia versus here, because like I've seen the pictures of her and she. She looks, I mean, obviously, like, it's off, but like it's, it's not like she's, like, in the gulags in my mind, but I don't know how Russian prison works. Is Russia technically, okay. They like, shut down the gulags, right? Okay. Yeah, sure, so she, there's she no in more. Moscow? I don't even know where she is. I don't know. I don't know. The gulags. What are, what, are, what are gulags? I only heard of that because of Call of Duty. So gulags were made popular, I believe, Lenin, but then Stalin really bumped them up where you use your prisoners as workers. Right. And so they were they turned their prisons into work camps and they basically were working people to death. So that was the gulag. So you not only were doing time, you were doing some hard time. You know, yeah. like being you know, mining and shit like that. Yeah, fuck mining. And then like to, to KB's point, <laughs> like there's some Russian prisons up in Siberia where people's yeah. feet are like freezing to the floor and stuff. We're going in a different direction. I apologize. Right. I love that shit though. You know, I don't. I don't love it. I pay all my tickets on time. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't. Want, I don't want to be the Rikers, much less the fucking Black Dolphin. Are they letting Griner like hoop in, in prison, or is she getting reps in? Is she getting right. shots off? Yeah. I'm being serious. Can you I'm imagine sure like being question. the best basketball team in a Russian women's prison, and, and then Brittany in. Griner shows up, and she's like, "I want to join the league." <laughs> There's no way Russians can play organized basketball. I, yeah, that I seems think they even like. I've doubtful. seen a clip, and it's just it's just martial arts. <laughs> like you could tap. Think. If yeah. she gets out within the next six months, that's gonna be a great career boost. Like she's gonna be uber famous, dog. Like you relatively knew who she was if you knew basketball. Oh uh, like, yeah, she'll get some endorsements. She's gonna be uber famous, yeah. dog. Like I, I hate that it happens. Don't be wrong. I think it's fucked up. But like that by that be a mighty little 
be a good little play for her if she gets out. <laughs> so you're, <laughs> would you go to Russian prison for a year to boost your net worth by like 800%? Me? You're the wrong person to ask because you're already too uh, I got to see. I got to see your yeah, daily yeah, yeah. schedule. Brittany Griner is okay not that. poor. She I makes 220 like for the league. She makes like 600 playing in China for four months. I think it's Russia. That's why they all go to Russia. Russia was throwing her a bag also, and then she's got the Nike deal. Brittany yeah, Griner is she's when she's she, a different. When, let's she, she gets out in six months. Yeah, all that shit going. The, yeah. the price went up. That's why yeah, they all go to Russia price. in the first place. Those but, oligarchs yeah. own like the women's basketball right. teams, and they they pay them very well. So to so T's like, point, does Sky Diggins all of a sudden try to get a you know an ounce in next time? Like try to yeah. you know follow the same route? I don't. Know. I don't think it's worth it. But I was no. just I was just tossing the you question don't think so? out there. You know, say you're say you're on the cusp of million. You, know, you got you got seven figures, but you can boost that to eight figures. Spend six months in. Buddy, I'd go to Russian prison to get to the first part to get to <laughs> I have seven figures. <laughs> yeah, I'm with yeah. you. I, I would say you're on purpose, but I, I think I mean any. She could she could clean up off of this if 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 she gets out soon. But like if if it if it if it gets lost in the news cycle in the next, you know what I mean? Like if she stays two, three years, then I don't think she can capitalize on it. I think there's a zero percent like, chance that happens. I think the big think difference so. is though, like you and I are adorable. We'd get the shit raped out of us consistently in prison. So you gotta that's there's a premium for that. KB's a little <laughs> bit harder around the edges. Uh, Arian yeah, looks like he take me. care of himself, right? <laughs> I don't know about Avery. I, uh, I could, I could, I could. You can find I them could, all. I could, I could ward off. Well, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, cause I, I heard, I've heard some stories. I've had some, I've had some buddies in there, and I've heard some other stories from there. Yeah. Like they have, they call them, <laughs> they call them booty bandits. They, oh, that's literally man. what they call them. I'm yeah, dead ass. I believe that. They be call, yeah, they call them booty bandits, and so it's like gangs, like rape gangs. There'll be like six or seven dudes who be like, yo, we want it, and you got to fight that shit off, or. It's funny how you started by saying you're dead ass because I would be too. I had no fucking facts. shot. Six facts. Guys. Yeah, facts. Yeah. Yeah. That's just that's just scary. I've, I've heard so many stories like that, dog. But like, there's this one. There's this one. Uh, What's the documentary, man? Where this dude was talking and he was like, they like convince themselves they're not gay, though, yeah. right? They'd be like, I ain't gay. I just like booty. Oh, and he said, hey, dude said, dude said, boot booty is more important than water. In here, and I was like, "Yo, man. Jesus!" I'm following <laughs> all <laughs> laws. Yeah, I ain't never go inside I, the I, big I, house. The, inside the big I, house I, was that one. I think I had seen yeah. it too. And was it? Was I, it? Don't because man. they get a guy who looks hey. dangerous, and he's washing dishes, so he's all steamy. That was like, is there sex in prison? He looked right in the camera. He's like, some of the best sex I ever had was in prison. I was like, honey, where's those fucking parking tickets? Get us up to date. Hey, <laughs> <That's laughs> <That's laughs> yeah. believe that. That's where they did the toss salad thing. He's like, I'll take a little jelly from the commissary and I'll put it in my asshole. Stop. And they were Stop. like, well, why do you do that? <laughs> do you do it, you know, for the other person? He's like, uh, you know, um, when you're eating jelly, you could pretend it's something else. But when you're eating my ass, you know you're eating my ass or something like that. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. That's it. I yeah. would still know it was the ass. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to shit, yeah. picture it. Yeah, being a cookie. Yeah. There's just no way. I don't. There's just no I way. I think Britney's having an I easier was, time. Yeah. Yeah, much easier. I, I, I would believe so. I I, uh, <clears throat> I went to jail one time and I had to stay overnight. And it wasn't a holding so it was like actually a sale. And it was just the weirdest experience I've ever experienced. Like, ever since then, I was like, yo, I'm never, like, I'm going to do everything I can. Did you have a cellmate? No, nah, I was in there yeah. solo, luckily. Damn. But, yeah, it was it was just so weird. And the prison guards and stuff, like, they knew who I was. And so, like, they were peeking in the window and shit. It was weird, man. I was like, yo, this is the most degrading, humiliating thing. I, I'm following the laws, like, even if I disagree with them. Yeah. You were scared straight. Hell yeah, that that place is not it. Wait, man. Well, when was this? This was in college. Oh, I was like, I was like nineteen. How is like, the Knox I, County Jail? I don't have anything to compare it to, and I'm glad for that. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck that place, man. Fuck all those places. I'm straight. That shit is not. Uh. Uh-uh. I don't yeah. think I would fare well in prison. Just gonna put that one out there. I don't think I'd do well. Uh, yeah, Maddie, you be holding, you be folding, you be folding laundry, Maddie. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Dude, I 
I I don't know what I would have to do. I, I would have to become a bitch, wouldn't I? Have you ever had know. any infractions, Maddie? No. One time I got bu- freshman year of college, but? I got busted drinking in my dorm room. That's it. Okay. But that I mean, all that resulted in was me having to go to a class about how drinking is bad. Aaron, I have a question. If uh, if number eight Tennessee had not lost twenty eight twenty four to number thirteen LSU hours earlier, giving Florida the SEC East, would you have gotten arrested? <laughs> Yeah. Still. <laughs> yeah, we wasn't partying mad. We was chilling. My whole family was in town. My brother, my sister, everybody was there. It was a it was at a club out east. Was it east? Goodfellas. I think it was Goodfellas. Uh ESPN says it was. Yeah, I think it was Goodfellas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was Goodfellas. And it was just it was a brawl broke out and it was just one of them things like you know, you get to swing and stuff happen. You don't you don't strike I, I me. Just, you don't strike me as like an aggressive person, though. Shit, Maddie, I've grown. Yeah, I guess sure. I guess you are like a fully grown adult. I have, yeah, I'm, I'm grown. I, I used to be, I used to be an asshole. Like, I used to be angry. I was angry, man. I grew up in the projects. I grew up no money. I grew up very. Are you, angry. Are you from New Mexico? Yeah, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah, nice. And so when you grow up in those environments, it's just like. You just have a chip on your shoulder. You, you think everybody's out to get you, and I don't know. A lot of times they are, and so you just you build up this. It took I took a it took a lot of therapy and a lot of unpacking my baggage and my emotional trauma to to get to the place where uh, Maddie says I don't view you as an aggressive person. I love that. Well, I don't. You should write a <laughs> memoir. You did, I bet you get a bag off that. Maybe. Yeah. Did you know. read Jamarcus's like article blog? I didn't read it, but I saw him on um, uh, the pivot, where he was vaguely explaining the same shit. Yeah, it was interesting. He's capping. Oh, that's what. Yeah, a lot of that just shit excuses. Cap, he was he was talking about. Hold on, sweetie. He was talking about. He used uh, lean for pain medicine. Yeah, he made it seem like it was like medicinal desperation. Ain't no fucking way. Oh, hold on, sweetie. Hold like on, sweetie. In the here, here, she wants to talk. Hold on. Okay, hold on one second. I have to take care of this. Hold on, yo. I have to, be, or I don't have to. I am babysitting Kate's kid later tonight. Oh, like, nice. Really? Yeah. Well, so she, so she tweeted this morning that um, she needed someone in the office that was going to be here from 6.30 to 7.30 to watch Cash. And I was like, okay, well, we record these. And then I'm usually here pretty late clipping and getting everything ready and i dm'd her i was like hey i'll i'll watch cash and she was like oh my god are you kidding and i was like no also her baby if anyone's seen her baby is the Gorgeous. cutest baby of all time and she was like yeah pat has to record hard factor and they have i guess the zbt like late interview and i was like i'll watch your baby and so she's bringing him to the office and i'm gonna like oh in the office yeah oh yeah i'm not yeah. going to like new jersey to babysit but she was like oh he just needs to be here and like run around and i was like Look, I hate kids and I don't want to have kids. That baby, like you, c- I would do anything for that baby. He's a good kid too. Oh my god! A party with him, <laughs> party with him. But no, my son was party. watching for a little while. Yeah, he drinks a little Turn bit. Up. But yeah, yeah. yeah. But he is, he yeah. is the cutest baby of all time. When we were at the um, Aryan, we had when Barstool was in the Pride Parade, and all of us were at the office before. And Kate was on. Kate's been on this and KB used to work with children <laughs> so i remember kb was just trying to play peekaboo with cash and I was. he wanted to play back he wasn't crying so that was good that's true he didn't cry at all at the pride parade which means he's not homophobic <laughs> he's an ally <laughs> and he's and it was hot and rowdy and like so he's a good baby yeah no and, he's and one- you should want to have kids <laughs> no you no. have a maternal charm <laughs> I'm with you. <clears throat> I'm with you, Maddie. I got four, and I second guess my decisions a lot. No, your kids are cute too, Aaron. I just I oh, they're ama- I, lo- I love them. I love them. But like, if I had to do it again, I'd have waited. I'd have, I'd have, I'd have waited. There's like now. There is no part of me now. that's that that seems like a desirable. How old are you? Twenty three. You should have a kid today. <laughs> no, you should. You should like, not. I'm going the opposite way. Because no. like one kid and you'll be 40 and the kid will be going into college yeah. and all the rest of the people, because you're going to have kids, you're a lovable person, all that shit. Thank Everybody you, else is going to be like my age when your kids are going to college and you're going to be fucking young and 
but no, my fastball intact. My parents are your age, and <laughs> I know they are. Yeah. It fucking hurts me every time you say it. No. Keep going. But, but they had. I mean, I think they're like. <laughs> she yeah, says it all the time. Yeah, uh, you somehow don't know it, like that. It never comes up in conversation <laughs> with anybody else. Every fucking time. Because you're, you're their exact age, and like my parents, my parents exact got. Age. Yeah. My parents got engaged when they were my age, mm. and which I think is like basically child bride, and um, they got they had me at twenty six. So like if my like that would be like my parents being big T's age and like having a baby like that's so terrifying to me. Um, so <laughs> so <laughs> not not big T, but just that age. Like big T and I are like pretty much the same age. Exactly. Yeah. Like Definitely. that's so terrifying. So um, I think I'm just gonna hold out as long as I can on that one, and like hopefully maybe like my like my clock will run out, and I'm just like, oh, sorry. You know, you know what you realize when you have kids? Nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. Everybody's just guessing, man. What it's I, fucking yeah. hilarious. I could. And then like it. you you go see other babies, and like yo, this is the funniest part is like you have a baby, large. Like you, you, you yeah. can attest to this. You'll have a baby. And like you get used to that baby's cries, like you understand mm -hmm. the cries. This cry means hungry. This cry means diaper change. You understand what I say. And then you go and visit another baby, and you're like, "What the fuck is that sound?" <laughs> and it's like the baby cry is the weirdest cry in the world. And you start judging other babies, start judging other kids. It just gets toxic, man. Gets no. toxic. If you if you do a good job, it's like you're the first person to ever have one too. And you talk to people and you start giving them advice. It, like I don't give yeah. people advice how to fucking change their oil. But every now and again, I'll give him advice on parenting. I have no business doing that. You know what I mean? My kids are pretty good. That was my job. Yeah. You get to be it's fucking. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I what, was just be was... like, did you try bringing the iPad into the bathroom? And they were like, oh, I will try that. And I was like, all right, my, you have a my job is in done. Kids. Yeah. Yeah. If that's I was just, just using basic logic to try to help them. <laughs> like my kids were, or my parents were done having kids at KB's age. That's so scary. And I mean, they weren't smart. Yeah, but they're they're, they're retiring early. Like I yeah. had a guy we used to call him yeah, now dumb, they're chilling. dumb Johnny dropped out of school. I tutored him to get his GED. Started in the fucking uh, sanitation. He got out after twenty five years. He's forty five, retired, and he had his kids early. The kids are out of college, right? And he's a young man. Do you know what I mean? Like he's gonna. Yeah. But I mean, right. he was fucked from eighteen to you know twenty seven or something like that. Yeah. But now he's sitting pretty. Yeah, dumb no. Johnny. I'm also poor. I don't get how people have babies when, like, like you make as much as me. Like, right. I don't. I I don't. Sometimes I don't go to grocery stores for a week. Right. So yeah. I, yeah, I was. Yeah, I was, maybe, I was just, maybe hold we were just talking about that. How do people have triplets? Like triplets how should do, all triplets are we, always like they're always well kept and preppy looking. They should all be <laughs> disgusting and bed raggled. Or I think all triplets, all triplets should become athletes so your parents don't have to pay for college. Bringing it back, like, how do you pay for three kids to go to college at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's so scary to think about. I don't think I'm responsible enough for that kind of triplets are. I mean, it's everybody's nightmare. And then, Jesus. and then, would, imagine uh, you're me. If, you you got to carry it. Well, like Arian has. I only have three. He has four. Yeah. Imagine if he convinced his wife. Listen, I know you wanted to say stop at three, but let's do four. I really want to have four kids. Then he puts it in there and it winds up. It's fucking three more kids. So then you're at what? He went three to six. Yeah. He did a double. I'd fucking cut his throat in the middle Big of the team. night. We gotta get these. <laughs> you know? We gotta get the embryos in labs. And just, <laughs> yeah. We gotta. So, we gotta let science. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, regulating on, child like birth. I don't get. Where are you going? <laughs> we, I know you have a take on like, uh, you know, population and childbirth. <laughs> do I? Do you? What do you think? There's too many, too little. Some parents should. That's some Billy. parents shouldn't. Billy. Billy I think thinks you're walking that a dangerous line. <laughs> all right. All right. But, right, right. Yeah, that's Billy definitely has that take. Billy Billy thinks that they're he's the Elon Musk that we we don't have enough people. We need more people. Oh, he's more people. Mm -hmm. He's more people. Where do you put them? You find a way. Oh, they, they don't care about that part. <laughs> no, uh, uh, no. I don't want anything inside me like growing. Oof. That's still that shit is like yo, like it happens all the time. But I don't think we really think about like there's other humans growing inside of it's humans. Yeah, you guys, you guys don't. You guys don't have to think about wild, it. Wild, bro. It's nah, a I'm, miracle. Hey, I, I'm always saying, look, whoever invented the human body, I got the 
yeah, yeah, women got the short end of the stick, and I for sure. Like y'all got periods, y'all got babies, y'all got hormones different. Like it's that would be tough. Yeah, none of lie. none that of you have to think about tough. being pregnant. I that is something Ever. that goes through my head. Ever. I just got a fucking kidney yeah. stone, so I know what yeah, you are. Yeah, you actually sister, do know that. Yeah, you know that. You had you had gout and kidney <laughs> stone right. simultaneously. Please, That's yeah. can, uh, oh, Canelo fuck just punched me in the arm, right? That's Canelo Alvarez. It's fucking hematoma. You know what? What happened to your arm, bro? I, I once I sparred with Canelo. We're doing uh, Canelo Triple G. You boxing guy, Aaron? I've watched. Okay, yeah. Canelo Alvarez fighting Triple G for the third time in September. So I cover, you sparred with him. Yeah, I cover boxing for these guys. So I went in there and uh, I did a round where it was just defense. I was just getting to tag him in the second round. He I ramped it up. I had to I had to say uncle a minute and a half into the second round. And uh, so I told him not. I was just at a hospital with the kidney, so I was like, stay away from the kidney. So he just. Went at my arms and chest and they beat the Jesus. balls off me. Uh, yeah, this is what it is. That's insane. You, yeah. you realize how how different the hand speed is, though, huh? It's, it's ridiculous when you go to. I'm left-handed yeah. in Southpaw. It's ridiculous when you go to throw a left hand, and at, before you even throw it, you talk. It's no longer there. Like so, yeah, it just winds up like stop. you just keep stopping. It's I guess yeah. stepping in at you know against a guy throwing a fastball, major league pitcher, would be the easiest thing to humble people. And I don't know how it would happen against a professional football player, how you guys humble people necessarily. But boxers, when you put on head gear, and I fought in college, but you put on head gear and you um and you go in against them, it's it's glaring just what another level that they're on. Mm -hmm. You know? You think that's like when two guys have equal talent, it kind of creates like a boring product, especially when they're more defensive. What right. do you think boxing needs that like WNBA needs? Like in the same vein as them using lower there, rims there, there, there's enough mismatches but the easiest way to make boxing more uh palatable would be to cut down on the size of the gloves really you, you know what yeah. i mean like headgear and like i was headgear and, and training gloves you know so the extra pads and stuff like that but more knockouts which obviously is more dangerous to the boxers and whatnot so uh so yeah that would be the easiest thing but i don't think it's broken there's enough mismatches no, not and at stuff all. yeah Wrestling too. Hey. No, wrestling is so boring, especially when you get to a higher level. Parody, yeah. Defensive, and then they guys cut are the wrestling program. Shit. My when well, my last year boxing in college, so all the wrestlers came over and fought. So I used to fight against oh, wrestlers. Yeah, Notre Dame did have a team. Yeah, and then they cut. So I was six five, two eighteen, fighting wrestlers who were like two eighteen, but like five nine. These fucking oh, pugnacious yeah. little motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you do the Notre Dame thing, like the charity one? Bengal bats, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I started. But they have this thing where you, you, you. Uh, there's this uh, small village in Bangladesh, and that one boxing tournament supports the village for the whole year. Jesus. So I signed up because I was on the impression I was going to get to fight starving Bengal kids. And you're like, oh, I, I, I have this fucking, in the fucking bag. I was going <laughs> to knock the flies right off their eyes, but then I wound up having <laughs> to fight other kids. Yeah. It, it was yeah. a fucking nightmare. Oh, you you went to a boxing event in Bangladesh and competed? No, no. We, uh, we So Notre Dame has it in at campus oh, every year, okay. and then we send the check over, and it keeps them alive for another year, essentially. Oh, Honestly. it's just a check. Okay, because yeah. otherwise they would take – like they took out second – second semester senior football players who used to just mm -hmm. get out there and throw old. so they took that out they wanted to you know just kind of get rid of it but this town relies on us so it's Fucking been around for Bang speaking to a lot of people bangladesh has like the sixth largest in the world population population really yeah 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 no kid okay, i went to high school with did the what's it called bangle bats bangle bats yeah and he did it he um was small was smaller than kb no <laughs> Damn. Right? I'm old and you're small. That we doesn't need to be. I'm old. Damn. <laughs> so he was. Hey, Maddie been throwing some shots at you. That's just a. Yes. That's just a yeah. picture that he's a guy. <laughs> yeah. And and Big T A is is an unfit parent currently. Like no, Big T did she say that? Shots. No, no. Did I miss she that? Said, no, said, I didn't. She said my that. parents were Big T's uh, age when they had me, and that's scary. I that's said it because said. Big T and I are very similar uh, age. I think. And why wouldn't you say your age? Because they weren't my age. But if you said it's similar age. Well, they were my age when they got engaged, which is also scary. That's a child bride. That's illegal. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily want a child right now, but. No, but um, no, he was so small and he did bangle bouts and gained like 30 pounds, like beefed up for it and mm. like won every year. Oh, did he? Yeah. yeah. But that like. You know, I think the issue with boxing right now is it's like wrestling, like <clears throat> like w, WF or whatever the, because I never watched that shit, but like it's. It's predicated off of personalities. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
And so it's like those draw the fights. And so like like Mayweather was like the last interest, real interest I had in boxing because I wasn't like I'm like a, like I'm not a boxing purist, but mm-hmm. I you know I, I watched it growing up. All the homies used to come over. And so like now it's it's that's what it's pretty. And I think I, I correct me if I'm wrong, Lars, but it started with Muhammad Ali was probably like the first character, like where he kind of like developed a persona for that and to sell his fights. And I think after that that became the template, and it just gets. It gets kind of corny because it's like forced. You know, I could have worked off no. the wrong premise. No, no, you're right. I mean, Muhammad Ali was arguably the most charismatic man since Jesus Christ, and then all of a sudden he becomes a boxer, and everyone either falls in love with him, or falls in love with him, or hates him. You know, you say that you were a Mayweather fan. Floyd Mayweather was probably one of the most boring fucking boxers ever. But if you watch the 24 sevens before his fight, HBO used to do those 24 sevens. They were awesome. You know what Wait, I mean? When you when you mean born when you mean born boxer, you mean his style? Wasn't a yeah. huge knockout guy. He he fought off yeah. his back foot with his shoulder up like the great defensive see, boxer, barely I, got I, hit. I, I'm a purist, I fight, so I, I enjoy it. But see, I was saying I, I fight with people all the time online anytime he used mm-hmm. to fight. Because to me, that shit was it was poetry. That that shit was beautiful. Like I loved it. Like defensive boxing right. was, is beautiful. And his hand speed, I would put his hand speed up there with any of the top hand speed boxers of all time. Like he had some well, then you're closer Floyd? to a purist than you think yeah. because okay. I love watching Floyd Mayweather because I love watching the art of boxing and I love watching yeah, a guy okay. not get touched, particularly yeah. in prison. Okay, so, so what do you think about <laughs> so, what do you think, so what do you think about like a Tyson Fury or like or like so like nowadays um, like the heavyweight scene, I don't feel like the technique is there like it was when I was growing up. Like when you watch Tyson or when you watched Evander or when mm-hmm. you watched like those kind of I feel like the technique was more solid back then. Am I am I off on that? Well, you watch I, I tell you one of the one of the most generational best fighters alive right now is a guy named Terrence Crawford, you know, uh, from, from Nebraska and whatnot. Terrence Crawford is boring as shit. Like it's tough for him to fill up. You know, that's that's why Jake Paul sells more tickets than Terrence Crawford. And Jake Paul is an absolute fucking joke who's very good for boxing because right. he's bringing along Amanda Serrano and stuff like that. But from a technical standpoint, where boxing is versus where it was, let's call it 20 years ago, no, it's still there. There's technically sound boxers even more so than there were back in the day as the athleticism gets better with technology and whatnot. Tyson Fury is a fat fuck, but he's also six foot nine and he's an excellent, excellent heavyweight boxer. And Lennox Lewis gotcha. could have been a fat fuck and still have been as um as successful. I think Lennox, one of the best heavyweight boxers has ever lived, but it's peaks and valleys. Muhammad Ali, right. nobody gave a shit about Larry Holmes. Mike Tyson, nobody gave a shit about who was after Mike Tyson. And I think boxing is on the come now. So, and remember, Mexico, Canada, England, Ireland, oh, every, those places are still enamored with it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So you get Canelo Alvarez yeah. versus Triple G. You have oh, a Russian right. versus a Mexican. I, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. selling a lot of fucking right. tickets. You know, um, yeah, so even though the United States is a little skewed because of UFC, right? UFC is taking no, market share. Latin America goes. Yeah, bizarre. they still go bananas for it. But uh, yeah, I should get you to yeah. a fight. You should come to a fight, Aaron. Oh, I loved it when I went I'm to the down. Garcia. I'm retired. I would be. Oh shit! shit. Yeah. I would tell you right now. I took this motherfucker to yeah. a fight. I took him to a Ryan Garcia. Right, the right. Ryan Garcia, Manuel Tego one yeah. in, in uh, San, San Antonio, Antonio, which is a terrible town. Oops, I'm sorry. People listen it, to this. Yeah, it, it was. It's terrible. It's, it it sucks. Uh, my, mom, my mom lives there. Does she? Uh, God bless her. Yeah. I'll be, you know, but, but I, I was there. It was I, 102 I degrees. I always tell her. I'm like, yo, well, I don't know the appeal. Like, Because I, I I bought her a house and I was like, yo, pick where you want to live. And like they were going through cities and they, she said San Antonio. I'm like, why well, San Antonio? I don't I never, I, when I, Every time I go there, it's just like a desert. I don't. I don't understand it, but hey, man, she's Bleak. happy. So whatever. this guy I took to a weigh-in, Aaron. That was my favorite be, part. And because so. he's a wrestler. And we had all this access to the fighters. I'm very close with Golden Boy and his own. He'd go up to the fighters as soon as they get off the fucking scale. Professional fighters, not even I'm KB from Barcelona. He'd just walk over to him. All right, what are you going to do to rehydrate? He was fascinated. Yeah, that's so, my. That's so fascinating yeah. to me. 135 was. So what do you think you're going to be? 130, 140, 147. What are you going to do? Like he was so into the rehydration, maybe more than the fights. Just the weight cut and then yeah. like the posts like refueling. It's incredible. You see like Patty the Batty. You see his. You see how he looks like oh, no, his, his g- like physical fluctuation is insane. Yeah, it's not healthy. I mean, I no, don't, it's yeah. not. But it's impressive. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, I, I think getting to a fight would be a lot of fun. 
Yeah, I'm yeah it was a blast. Um, definitely. I got super into like UFC and MMA when I started training for jujitsu. Um, that shit is in the time. Like I, I used to think I could fight. Like I used to think I could handle my own until you run into like real martial arts. Like some of the martial arts are kind of like, eh. But like jujitsu is one of the ones where it's like, oh, like if you if you run up against somebody who know what they're doing, like they could, you could lose a limb, dog. But um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, when you when you start when you start like mincing all those martial arts together you get the mmas and stuff like that that's that's where that's i think that's where the future of like fighting is and like boxing is like one element of it you know what i mean so i like i said i'm not I, I i'm like a super fan but like i've caught some on you know on my on my come up and and in, in doing jujitsu it gets you more interested in other martial arts and stuff like that but i don't know man i feel like Oh, go give uh, me. Who is it? Adrian Broner? Who is he? The, the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen some clips of him. and He showed up 45 minutes for a Zoom interview with me, and he was in his underwear oh, yeah. sipping champagne in bed. I was like, isn't oh, this yeah. fight week? Broner doesn't give a shit. Yeah, so he's I, back, and he, he they gave him his press conference on Zoom. He's like, I'm fucking out of here. Like, he wants yeah. more promotion. He was very good when he, he was he – was, he was compared to Floyd Mayweather for a long time, Adrian. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he just doesn't have – you know, Floyd is – Again, a generational fighter, mm-hmm. fifty and over, yeah. right? Right. Yeah, that's insane. Right. So, do you think? Do you think? You think the Jake Paul and stuff? You, so, you think that actually is good for boxing? Well, so Amanda Serrano is a millionaire now. My son, who's eighteen, when he watched one of the Jake Paul fights, he said, "Dad, when this guy French Montana is fighting again, can you make sure I know?" And he's never asked me to watch boxing. And French is a real <laughs> fighter who's on the and since has been picked up by DAZN and is doing pretty well and whatnot. Who he's is guy, French Montana. I think it's French Montana. That's he carries a rapper. The, no, no. Oh, so it's um, Montana yeah. Love. Excuse oh, me, okay. Montana Love. Yeah. I was like, I was but which is another <laughs> like, is he in the another <laughs> another great name, Montana Love is a good for name. a fucking boxer, and he carries a white. Um, French bulldog in. That's why I got French Montana. <laughs> and then whenever uh, he's fighting a Mexican yeah. fighter, he always wears a sombrero like Floyd used to do. Because Floyd Mayweather's uh, uncle was called the Mexican Killer, and he used to wear a yeah, serape yeah, yeah. and okay. shit in. That's so yeah, yeah, Montana love. But my son is like, and that's opening up real boxing on top. It's frustrating boxing purists again, but I don't yeah. care. I just like when there's more eyes on people like Amanda Montana. There's this kid Joe Ward that was supposed to be fighting on this last undercard, a light heavyweight. I was looking forward to seeing Mighty Joe Ward. So um, you know, as you get past that bullshit, the Jake Paul stuff can be entertaining. Watching a yeah. kid knock somebody out is entertaining, yeah. even if it's a, a washed up UFC guy or an ex Nick. It's still nice to see them hit the deck, you know. Right. So I don't, I don't mind I, it. I really think that's the future of fighting. Honestly, just entertainers going after it. Like you said, like, yeah, it's more personality based than skill based as far I as think entertainment. I think, yeah, I think like the the fights is always going to be the fights, like the real boxers. But like as far as like draws and stuff, like you'll have entertainers on the card. You know, to bring other cats out. I think I really think that's the future. Well, that's let me just ask, the world. Let me ask but, you, Aaron. Would you rather watch Tyson Fury, one of the heavyweight champions of the world, fight the winner of Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk to unify the heavyweight division, or would you rather pay the same money in pay per view to watch Tyson Fury fight Francis Ngannou, the, the big guy from UFC? Yeah, it's the latter, and people are like, yeah. bam! I want to go see him fight Ngannou. Ngannou's a fucking yeah. beast and stuff. But Ngannou's got to wear gloves. He can't use his feet. All that kind of stuff. And Ngannou will get washed. Like I know yeah. he will get. But I, you know, as a purist, I want to watch the first. But everybody else wants to watch Ngannou, and he can make thirty million dollars finding a guy who's not a boxer but who looks like a fucking uh, superhero. It's easy yeah. money for Tyson Fury. They so, should do two yeah. fights where you where you enter each other's worlds. I've always wanted that to happen. Like where an MMA guy just boxes and then a boxing guy just does MMA. Like that that would be fire. Yeah. I would like that shit. And Mayweather's the only one who really, excuse me, McGregor is the guy who does it, comes over and boxes. And by the way, this circus shit's not new. Muhammad Ali, who you mentioned, went over mm-hmm. and fought, you know, uh, Aoki, the, the guy. The giant guy? Japan, yeah. Yeah. Seven yeah, yeah, yeah. foot something. No, no, no. Uh, he fought uh, no, no, no. Steve Aoki from uh, oh, Lincoln Steve Park. Oh. No, no. He, he fought he Inoki. Was, uh, he, he, fought uh, this, he was jujitsu, wasn't he? Jujitsu. And the yeah, guy yeah, went. Was, so yeah. it's over. And this closed circuit undercard was Andre the Giant fighting Chuck Wepner in Madison Square mm-hmm. Garden. And the yeah. Bayonne Bleeder, the guy Rocky's based off of Chuck Wepner, yeah. was fighting Andre the Giant. Chuck Wepner also fought a fucking bear once. Oh, and Ali's yeah. in Japan with Inoki on his back in a gi. On his back the whole time. Just heel kicking yeah. him the whole time, yeah. you know. So these yeah. circus shits So what's is not stopping new. boxing from doing these like gimmick matches like these Logan Paul 
Fucking Mayweather goes to the to, to the roof of a um you know Abu Dhabi goes to the roof of some hotel and fights Ten Shin uh fucking you know dude <laughs> yeah. for thirty million dollars so no nah, you know, I remember that yeah, yeah. yeah so if you're a big enough name like you know and you have some familiarity strike while the iron's hot fucking do it yeah. I'm with that mm. totally with that man so does anybody else have anything any uh current events before we hop into today's topic man anything you want to talk about there was some there's some about the irs that popped off today did anybody see that i saw it yesterday uh what are they talking about i think it was just people saying like uh oh biden wants to hire eighty-seven thousand irs agents is that yeah. what it is do we do we do we know why I don't know. He's he's raising taxes on everybody. I guess you gotta have somebody to enforce. He's it. actually not big T. Cut the games, man. No, that's it's true. Not. No, it's not. I sent you the the official like White House document. You did, but as always, there's always some things in there that they don't read through all the way, and people from your side of the aisle assert certain things that aren't true. It happens all the time. They're not raising those taxes. What was not true about it? <clears throat> I have to pull that shit up, man. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. I'm gonna, I think I can set this one out. Go for it. So they're they're adding 87,000 IRS enforcement agents to come after your tax returns. That's terrifying. I'm sure they're only well, they're, doing that for the 30 billionaires that live in this country. Cracking down to come tax after who, to come after who's uh, tax returns? Just everybody in general. I don't know where it's going to be targeted, but the guys who have $30 million usually have a bulletproof tax return for the most part. It's assholes like me. Well, I shouldn't say this on things. I'll be put on the list. You know, they kind of cut corners. That's probably what I, I would assume they're going to make their wood with a uh, middle to upper middle class more so than they will from the big boys. Don't you? I do think that. Yeah. Yes. So I think, yeah. Hold on, I'm Perhaps out of everyone here, I'm the most fucked. About what? I'm IRS. Sorry, I'm this. If the IRS Why put eighty seven thousand, because I think the way that I, you know, particularly people who do their own taxes and have those small little loopholes that they think they're getting away with, as opposed to the uber rich who have their taxes done by people who know the tax law inside and out. Yeah. Um, well, the guys, uh, the former, are probably more fucked than the latter. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, A fully truthful and accurate tax return is a bulletproof way to avoid an audit. And I don't know if many people can say they have a fully truthful and accurate tax return. Let me let me get back to you on that, Big T, because I'll have to mull it over. But um, I think it was, they're not raising anything over 400,000 or something like that. That was what they claimed. Yeah. But That's now that, but their, now that their plan has gone into action, it's actually, it's like 50. There's no way. I, I'll I'll look at it. I'll reserve my judgment till anyway. Give, what, give, that, give me, aside, that, that aside, that aside, can we? I, I'm genuinely curious because I think you and I would agree on this, but I don't know if we're hmm. spending tens of billions of dollars to beef up the IRS and sending more billions to Ukraine while inflation is running rampant. Can we can we agree that that's a probably a bad choice to make? What that? What is the bad choice? Just spending billions and billions of dollars on those two things, particularly. I'm not in the camp that uh, the government spending money is uh, necessarily a bad thing. Like I'm not one of those debt fear mongers. So, no. Okay, I don't think you necessarily have to be that to agree with what i said but well i don't know the reason as to why like i said i i'll just bring it up i don't know why they're putting all that money into the irs but that doesn't necessarily scare me because inflation is happening you know it doesn't scare me i just think it's a bad idea and unnecessary. I, I, I wouldn't know. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know enough about what's going on. I, I have to look into the reasons as to why. What What is your before we get into the uh, topic for the day, um, large? Your take on taxes in general coming from Wall Street? Um, I ta uh, I I don't enjoy paying them. 
um, mm-hmm. is one of the things. And uh, so my pay was, I don't know how close it was to an athlete's pay, but so my pay was a small salary with a big bonus. That was the bulk of my thing. And it was done as almost a tax uh, reasons for the company that was paying me. And then it fucked me as the guy who was getting paid. So they could have me on the as on their books as making a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year. But then they hit you with a bonus that's, you know, yeah. and so a lot of Wall Street guys around February, excuse me, yeah, February, March, when the bonus checks would come in, because they never came in on, on Christmas, even call it Christmas bonuses, would then pay for everything for the rest of the year because they were uh, relatively poor for, you know, compared yeah. to their lifestyle. So right. all, all nice things. So the way my structure was set up and our bonuses were taxed even more heavily than our um, our salaries. So I used to feel that bite in the first quarter every year, and it caused me so much animosity. How do I fix taxes in this country, flat taxes and all that stuff? I don't, I don't really know, to be honest with you. I've just been a, a willful participant in it ever since I started working. You know what I mean? Yeah. Big yeah, no, T is I not agree. a willful part, or you. What do you mean no, by he, willful? It's required. You're, you're, all, he thinks, you're actively. He thinks taxation is theft. He thinks taxation. Is but you're active. You're 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 not just. Uh, I'm just going to pay my taxes. You're actively angry about it, like on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. Every paycheck I get. Do you like look at that? I mean, I know what my paycheck sh- would be. Yeah, and then I so see what it is. Yeah. Gotta How, let it go. Where? Where oh, are man. you on your, uh, where are you? Uh, it's even, it's even biblical, Big T. Zacchaeus. What do you mean? Jesus, Jesus mentioned taxes. You, he you did. You gotta pay taxes. He was a, a wee are little you, man. He, he didn't against, mention it you, as like, I am in favor of taxes. He said. He says, Render unto Caesar. What is Caesar? Yes. Saying you have bigger fish to fry in this life than worrying about that. Just do it and you will. You know your your reward is in heaven. Your your concerns are not of this world. He was not saying, "I love taxes." I didn't say he said he loved taxes. I was saying yes, he did say render render, render unto Caesars. That's an interesting inter- interpretation. Render to season. I I interpret it as like if you're a part of a collective society, it's a debt that you owe to society. I believe he was saying because you're a part of it, do it. That's fine. Yeah, you have to do this, but. That's not, you know, your your concerns are of a far greater importance than that. So who cares? I think you should reread that passage, but yeah. I digress. All right, Why? Man, nobody, because that's not what he was talking about. <laughs> they asked him specifically about taxes. He didn't say, don't worry about it. Your reward is in heaven. This is just something you have to do. He was addressing taxes. He was addressing if you're part of a collective, it's your debt to society. T. I'm enjoying this dynamic. Big T is a libertarian. They are hilarious. I've never said that. <laughs> oh, Big T. Oh, what? Know. What? You never said you're a libertarian? Not to the best of my recollection. And I mean, somebody chime in here. Mad Dog. Avery, he's said this multiple times. I, I I think you've mentioned by name that you've that you are a libertarian because you because oh, I'll, I'll call you I'll call you a conservative. Yeah, I've never said that either. Right. I'm, I know I said I'll call you a conservative and you'll say I'm a libertarian. Yeah, which, you this is your word. I'm not a conservative, which is also bullshit. But I've whatever. never said that either. I know. I'm. That's what I said. You said I'm not a conservative last week. What are you? Uh, I would say most of my views fall more in line further to the right than left but <laughs> i wouldn't call oh, myself i wouldn't label myself anything okay yeah it's, like, yeah, it's like an esports just just <laughs> big <laughs> esports <laughs> that's comedy no you have uh, yeah i don't know enough about libertarians to chime into that one they don't know enough about, about libertarians that's the funny thing about libertarians libertarians no no libertarian thinks another libertarian is a real libertarian it's the funniest shit in the world have it's you seen so that funny one last thing and then we'll go to um catfishing but the video of the guy saying like um the, the libertarian presidential um debate where they talk about well, like oh i need a driver's license like do i need a yeah, yeah. that's a real thing yeah that, like because <laughs> that's that's like the extent of of 
of like if you have if you're a libertarian like you believe in freedom right that's but like, they don't believe in government oversight but they only believe in government oversight with the government oversight that they agree with which is why they don't think other libertarians are real libertarians like some people are like no driver's license are pretty reasonable i would but they're like no that's over that's government overreach right like you have all you have all the way like anarchists right but then you have like soft libertarians like so like there's this big spectrum where nobody thinks that they're real libertarians it's it's fu- it's fun it's funny it's actively funny I think it's the same way with like most religions too. Mm-hmm. Like I'm Catholic, but I, I don't think I need to go to church on Sunday. That's how, yeah. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Actually, I do, yeah, it ends but up I don't. Same. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I figured yeah. it all out. It just doesn't really work for me. And yeah. at what point? At what, <laughs> yeah. at what point am I not Catholic? I think yeah. yeah. When do they throw us out? I think yeah. I'm not. <laughs> like I mean, when do you, when do you like get kicked out of the church after a while? I'm getting all my kids confirmed. I told them once they go through their confirmations, then they can make whatever decision they want. Honestly, yeah. And I did a thing on Swiss history of Satanism. They make some good points. Mm-hmm. So I'm not I'm not against anything. They but, do good work, actually. Yeah, they, I mean, Satanists menstruating for Satan. These this satanic cult. But, you know, gives out like feminine products because they're still taxed in Texas. It's called mm-hmm. menstruating for mm-hmm. Z. They do do a lot of good stuff. Um, and but it's that, and it's it's a different. It's not the lighting candles and killing sheep. No, nah, yeah, there's two. There's there's two. So there yeah. there is. Yes. People who worship the devil for mm-hmm. sure. But the Satanist group was created like in the 70s, 60s, 70s mm-hmm. to troll religious folks. And so all they do is like so let's say somebody wants to put the Ten Commandments on a government property. Let's say, well, if you do that, well then you're gonna have to put Baphomet next to it because you and have to our religion as well. And they did it. Yes. It was awesome. that, that's their whole they they just want to hold to account the freedom from religion, you know, and the separation between government and 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 religion. They they want to hold that to account. And they also they do a lot of good works like the administration for Satan. They do they do a lot of charity work. They do a lot of like good stuff. It's but it was basically set up like as a troll, but they it's just an organization where they do a lot of good shit. But and they accept yeah. science. They accept mm-hmm. science, you know, like the scientific advances trump all our other stuff. You know what I mean? Like they're willing to mm-hmm. change with the time. Pro yeah. Satan. I'm a Satanist apparently. Yeah. But I'm yeah. I'm wondering, you know, when I think you're officially thrown out of the Catholic Church. Yeah, I don't think I'm proud. The you extent pay of that, I no. It's kidding. I don't like it. fuck my neighbor's wife. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think what other. T- I mean, there's there's um, some Catholics and Christians. But if I, that. You probably I mean, follow a few commandments <laughs> unintentionally. Yeah. yeah. yeah like like I, you haven't. Have you killed anyone? I'm not. I, I was never given the opportunity, but I think I, w- I would. Would would. <laughs> you nice to your mom and dad? Oh uh, yeah. No, I know the Ten Commandments. Uh, Eric, can I read you just just real quick this this interpretation of the verse in Matthew you were talking about? When Jesus Shoot. said, render to Caesars the things that are Caesars, he was drawing a sharp distinction between time two out, kingdoms. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. What are you reading and where is it from? Why this is, this the is so, uh, the verse. There's, there's. Oh, the verse is render thousand, unto Caesar the things which are Caesars and unto God what is but, God's. But what I'm saying, there's maybe a thousand different sects of Christianity. So like whatever you're reading from is obviously an interpretation from them. I want you to read it and then you get the interpretation from it. I told you what I think. Okay. So then I'm reading you what someone I, else I, I, thinks when you because you oh, said that's okay. wrong. God. I didn't say that was wrong. I said that's an interesting interpretation. Uh, he was drawing a sharp distinction between two kingdoms. There is a kingdom of this world and Caesar holds power over it. But there's another kingdom not of this world and Jesus is king of that. Christians are part of both kingdoms, at least temporarily. Under Caesar, we have certain obligations that involve material things. Under Christ, we have other obligations that involve things eternal. If Caesar demands money, give it to him. It's only mammon, which is uh, Latin for like money. But make sure you also give God what he demands. I think that's part of a collective. I think that's pretty similar to what I said. I think it's similar to what we both said. Okay. Good work, Pay your boys. Taxes. Pay fucking taxes. Yeah, we, 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 we crack, Which we I do. Fucking case right I there. do pay taxes. Reluctantly. <clears throat> yeah. Very. Not really. Right, gentlemen. Well, it's not, yeah, it's well, not, not very reluctant. I'm don't... just, I, I, I don't like it. Okay. It's not real. Like, I've never. You're not taking I, up I don't arms. delay it. Yeah. Right. And starting I the militia. It. Yeah. Nothing really happened. <laughs> yeah. well, like, you... I paid, I did turbo tax like in June. Oh, I do wait until April. Yeah. But. It's always by the deadline. Mm. You put your tax in in June? Yeah, it was really late. Cool. <laughs> Nothing really happened. I don't. Yeah, simple as that. Excellent. Sorry, my daughter keeps. Our headphones keep coming off and she don't know how to fix it. 
But we back, many, baby. Too many kids. Yeah, it's way too many kids, man. <laughs> Shit. See, see, I want, I maybe want one more, but I don't know, man. They they come with baby mom, so and that's that's what's wrong. <laughs> it's too many kids, but maybe I have one more. And, you that's know, facts. I say to my wife all the time, let's have another one. She's like, you're fifty. Oh well, yeah, right. That might be pushing it, man. Oh, nah, you're damn right. It's not. It, it's not. It's not. No. Fifty not to have a child. Think about a dog when 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 that when that baby graduates, you're gonna be like sixty eight. Shit, college will be seventy. I know, but it's not. Out I want It's not. It's, it's happened. I bought. That's facts. I've always wanted to be, but I've always wanted to be in touch with like what my kids are into, right? Like right. somewhat, so that I'm I'm not getting game because I know you ever grow up with like somebody who got like really really old parents, it's like late 60s, 70s. They be gaming them. You know what I'm saying? They just be <laughs> running all over them, and they don't know what's going on. So I I want to know what's going on. Just I, it's for their safety more than my interest. My grandfather had his last kid when he was 73. Fathers. There you go. Your father to baby was 73. Okay. That's nine, like nine Elon kids. Musk. On an Pops. island off the coast of Ireland. There was nothing to do. He was just straight yeah. up fucking. Really? Yes. Yeah. Wow. I mean, island? congrats, though, for 73 still having to drive Damn like right. that. That's what's up. Yeah. yeah. Good genes right there. All right. You know what he died of? Exhaustion. <laughs> Shit, that, that would kind of be whack because I've been really exhausted and I was like this. That would, that would suck to get that far to die. <laughs> if so, I mean, I'll tell what are you dad. doing right now? I'll tell my dad. What? What were you doing just now? What, right now? Yeah. Well, I was looking at my phone. <laughs> Why are you holding it like that? I, I don't like looking down. It's bad for my neck and my posture. Got it. Thank you. Looks right. like he's taking a selfie. Yeah, that's oh, what I thought he was. No. Yeah. yeah, no. Hey, man, take a selfie, though, man. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm been, I've been doing it. <laughs> just for my archives, just like... To see like it's good to have how my face changes throughout time. It's kind of I've more. always wanted to do that. Like start start the year, like January first, take a selfie, and just continue to take a selfie, and then just do that little fast uh, time lapse. Yeah, thing. it's always that, cool. That would always be. I don't have. Yeah, the, I've, yeah. I never. I never. I don't have the discipline. The to commitment. Do that. You know yeah, what? I'm doing that this year. Fuck that. It, my just, it takes like five up. seconds a day. You can do it. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to put a little separate folder in my photos. All right. I've just motivated myself. I'm doing that shit. Yeah. I feel like you've had the same face for like 25 years, though. I've aged well. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. Man. Look at that shit. Look at my skin. Big teeth. Look at that shit. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's fine. Hey, Big T, am I handsome, though? Uh, Yeah, you're fine. Fine. Hey, quote card that. <laughs> with the quote inflection yeah, call, with which he it called was me, said. He, he called me fine. I'm with fine. you, Big T. Play the audio clip. Nah, we need a quote card. We need to add a context shit. All right, man, let's move on to the um the topic of today's podcast, an hour in. Catfish. Catfishing. So, from my understanding, this is a relatively new thing. If I'm wrong about that, somebody stop me. I think I think large 1700s. There was this guy. His name okay. was his name was Cardinal de Rohan. Right. This is a guy, mm -hmm. and he wanted was he, to. Uh, he was he wasn't like a cardinal religious. No, no. Right? Yes, it was a it was a, a title, was not a, a religious title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's a red bird. <laughs> he, was like, oh, bird. <laughs> he was in with Marie Antoinette and her posse. Then he got tossed out. And he was desperate to get back in with like the aristocracy of mm -hmm. France. This is pre-French Revolution where everyone had the Shit. powdered wigs, the big bustle dresses. It was it was that time. So Cardinal de Rohan is out. He meets this woman and her name was Comtesse uh, de, la Mot de la Mate. Con Comtesse de la Motte is what it's pronounced, mm -hmm. I believe. And she's a grifter. She convinces him that she is tight with um, Marie Antoinette, who's the queen of France at the time. So she's so tight, she says that she's going to get him back in good graces. They start dating, the cardinal and the comtesse. And she says, start writing letters to Marie Antoinette, and I will send them to her when I have lunch with her. So he starts writing letters to her. Then she would go to lunch with this other guy that she was banging, and that guy would write letters back to the cardinal as the queen. And that was the catfish. Okay, and pretty wow. soon that guy wrote a letter back on behalf of the queen, fake. I want this uh, famous necklace. And she convinced the cardinal 
to then buy a necklace to give to Marie Antoinette. This guy goes, buys a necklace that has 650 diamonds and weighed almost 2,800 carats. Be like 15 to $20 million in today's money. The Cardinal buys it on layaway, thinking that he's buying it on behalf of the Queen, and the Queen will then make the pay, uh, payments. Gives it to the Comtesse. She heads for the hills with the guy that she's banging, goes to London and starts selling the individual diamonds. The mm-hmm. fucking jeweler then hits up Marie Antoinette, the queen, when the payments don't start coming in. She investigates. She arrests the cardinal, the comtesse, the guy that she was banging, and the prostitute that posed as her because the cardinal needed to see that it was really like she was really friends with him. So they found mm-hmm. a prostitute to kind of look like Marie Antoinette to like meet him one night to say hello. Fucking crazy. Whoa. Yeah. So uh, the Cardinal was, I think he was, he was, he was let go. But the Comtesse, the one who was at the bottom of it, she was put in jail. She was given a, uh, a brand, a V, Volaire, for a French for thief. And she was sentenced to death. She wound up escaping from prison. But the fact that it became a huge story in France didn't help Marie Antoinette, who already had that aura about, hey, listen, the peasants have no more bread. We'll let them eat cake. Like she had that whole thing going. So the French peasants already hated her so much that they think that was one of the contributing factors that led to her, you know, during the French Revolution, um, being sent to the guillotine and having her head chopped off. So that was the first official catfish. It was like 1783, and it involved Marie Antoinette. It wasn't called catfishing back then, even though I put Was there any like romantic or sexual incentives here, or was it just... For One who? guy thinks he's talking to the queen. Yeah, so he's banging the what, girl who says she knows the queen. And what the, was her incentive? Did she get the jewels? To get the jewels. Okay. And then she took the 650 diamonds to go so sell them in London and got she caught. got turned back. Yeah, How yeah, yeah. whack are you to get caught catfishing <laughs> back then? It sounds like this was pretty easy. Yeah. It should have It should have been so easy. Uh, you just That's find somebody who believes you. Right. Yeah. So I think you can't, so, what are you gonna check. So yeah. people consider that the first instance of catfishing, even though there was mm-hmm. wasn't like poisson de chatting or something like that back then, because it was somebody posing as somebody else in what would be like a social media esque type yeah. situation because that was the written letter at one point. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then she obviously yeah. it led to a beheading. Boom. Yeah. And wow. that's that's crazy because t- y- you would have to spend so much time and energy to track these people down because it wasn't like today where you can identify people like you had to that had to be your goal was to go get them motherfuckers yeah that's crazy yeah it's a wild story and then somebody must have had to dime somebody out because to, to also arrest the prostitute like somebody had to throw her under the bus because e- like easiest thing in the world the so this person came for his money to the queen the queen said who bought him said the cardinal she's like i, I let that guy out of my life a long time ago they arrested the cardinal and he dropped a dime on the comtesse Then they tracked down, I guess, the prostitute and obviously the guy that she was banging. So I think, you know, once the queen says, listen, I'm looking for this uh, necklace where it gets out to London. Some guys like "Oh, I bought a bunch of diamonds from that necklace. You know, like you kind of figure out what's Mm -hmm. going on again in the 1780s. Meanwhile, they're storming the Bastille, (laughs) the whole deal. Louis the seventh. I think she was married to Louis the 16th. Louis the 16th. He he gets caught. He gets killed and she gets beheaded like six months later. It was a wild time to be alive during the French Revolution. Wild time to be a rich French person. Um, yeah, and it didn't help her uh, her her rep, her street cred. No, it's catfish. So, so, so this was the first catfish. That's that's I didn't know that. That was that was boom. That was enlightening. That was yeah, a little twist of history. Subscribe to the YouTube page. Yeah, <laughs> time. I got you. I got you. Timeline wise, though, before yeah. that, Aladdin. Aladdin was. Oh no. <laughs> Probably the first catfish, time wise. Time, time wise, wise. Al- what era time. was the Aladdin? I forget. Aladdin was before the 1700s, wasn't he? I, I don't, don't know. know. But the story was story told in the 90s, so I'm, I'm talking bullshit. Yeah. But um, yeah, Aladdin wasn't the prince. Uh-huh. Comes to Princess Jasmine, pretends he is. He fooled the whole. He fooled everybody. But then, you know, they called his bluff and she still wanted to rock with him. But yeah, Mulan, too. Mulan is a catfish. Well, not necessarily because her goal wasn't to get a a girl or any riches. It was to, like, prove herself. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm just thinking Disney movies along along the same lines. But yeah, it was not a romantic. I 
how are we how are we defining Cinderella? catfish? I think I think that's important. I think true. It, be, it became yeah. an official term when the the catfish show MTV show, show when right? the guys released yeah. their original documentary in like yeah. 2010. Um, and that's when yeah, that's when the term came about. So cuz tricking people So this is was yeah. like it's like grifting but like when this, the, the the documentary was like the ultimate catfisher this heavy set woman from Michigan who kept like a year long relationship going she created a fake facebook profile and then several facebook profiles for her fake relatives and that oh, was that that's that's elaborate and she would yeah. only sp- was that it yeah, so it was that guy Nev, and so he thought yeah. he was uh, communicating with a nineteen-year-old girl. The nineteen, yeah, okay. So yes. this is this older woman. It, right. They do. They have phone conversations. Never like she. Her webcam was permanently broken, mm-hmm. and she didn't sound a thing like a nineteen-year-old. No, she's a forty-year-old housewife. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and did did they say why? Did she say why she did it? I think she did at the end. Um. But but it was to Nev, the dude that was. That started that show. Yeah, I think like you know anyone who wants to create a fake persona and like cosplay as someone like as a hot young woman, I get the incentive kind of. I got got before, and I get the it, you got got. <laughs> I got got before. I got. Catfish. Oh no! Yeah. When you say catfish, do you mean someone who just completely like didn't exist, or just like didn't look like they said they did? Didn't didn't exist. Oh, or that's the well, worst that one. person existed because her pictures were real. But, but it was totally different. Yeah. Well, I, well, see, and so, I mean, I, I, and this was early on when catfishing wasn't really known. But you know, I I just smelled some fishy, no pun intended. And so, uh, <laughs> well, what, what, and so, so was it social media? It was social. It was Facebook, and this was like Facebook when, when uh, only college people could get on Facebook. It was for college people. Were you in college? Or yeah. If, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You needed a, a edu address. And so, you know, as we get to talking and we'll, we'll be chatting or whatever, um, she starts sending me like pictures and I'm like, you know, young, horny kid. I'm like, I'm sending them back. Right. We get we getting into it. And every time um, I would like, yo, let's let's talk over, you know, over video, like some would come up. She would keep, you know, make excuses. I'm like, all right. And so it, it but she kept on doing it. She kept on doing it. But like we was getting involved, you know phone sex, stuff like that. And then it got to the point where I was like, yo, I don't trust this shit. Like something's off. Like why well, won't you show yourself? Rewind, stuff? phone sex, like te- just texting or you talked on the phone to a person? Both, both. And what was the both. voice you were hearing? Was it sounded like a, a hot girl? It sounded good. I mean, it sounded <laughs> good. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm looking at the pictures, it's matching to me, you know? And so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, man. And so, yeah, so, so things, you know, get a little deeper. Um, I'm I'm like, yo, this is this is whack. Like, show yourself. And so I was like, all right, send me a picture with you holding a spoon. There like, you that, go. that was like, I was like, you know what I'm saying? And that was I was before my time with that shit. But mm. I was like, yo, I just didn't it didn't seem right. So I was like, yo, send me a picture of you holding a spoon. And she sent a picture of some of the same girl, but like the the spoon was obviously photoshopped. And I was like, yo, <laughs> get the fuck out of here, yo. It was the it was it was and wild because that was my first experience. But I was like, I was upset because like, yo, you, yo, this is months we talking on the phone now. You know what I mean? Like, this is months like we 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 talking about getting together. Yeah, but so, how often was her video or webcam not working? Then, I mean, it's, every it's day reasonable back then because it wasn't like <laughs> FaceTime. Like you had to do yeah. Skype. Remember, that's when Skype was popping, right? Before it got sold, but like so Skype was popping then, and so she was like making excuses, and I was like, you know, it's understandable. People don't know how to work webcams. You know, I'm kind of savvy, whatever. Oh, I thought. And so, <laughs> and so, yeah, man, I, I think the bigger point is I didn't get hurt by it because obviously it was just a sexual transaction for me, which, which that was the goal. Uh, but like right. people have res- gotten real, like hurt really bad with this shit. But like love, people fell in love. Like, and I used to think that how could you fall in love? But then I, mm-hmm. I did a little like digging, like people used to like, in like world in World War One and World War Two, they used to have like pen pals and they used to write each other back and forth. And people like really fell in love and you fall yeah. in love with how people put the words together and the personalities that they show over those over those pages. And like people developed lifelong relationships. People got married because of that. And so in this new age, 
it's kind of laughable to think that you can fall in love with some words on a screen, but it's a no. real thing. And and I, I you know, luckily didn't get hurt like that. But that's that's what interested me in the subject was like, yo, people have really got yeah. hurt. People have sent money, and that's the, that's when it gets real, really real to where it's like you, you might get hurt doing some shit like this. Is people send money. She did ask me. She said her little brother had cancer and can I help oh, him out? And I was like, nah. Can I ask? Can I ask one question? I, I think we've said on this show you've uh, you've engaged in relations with a multitude of women in the past. I, I had a wild younger days. I sure. assume when you were playing college football at an SEC school, you were not hurting in that uh, regard. So why? No, so why were you like on Facebook with some rando that you'd never met? Uh, well, you don't. You don't have sex with a woman and then you're satisfied like you might be satisfied for the day but like back then like it was like, to run up the body count was a goal you know what i mean like i'm not yeah. proud of that it's very misogynistic yeah but there were like but and there were like it, a lot of women no he sees at, a hot girl that he can fuck disgusting. at the university of tennessee that that's, you could do absolutely. that all the time well, but then, but Ab then. absolutely but my thing was <laughs> So to me, this is more of like a, a kink, but like to me, it was more like the ch the chase, thrill of yeah. the chase you have was, to get it. was what uh, like, so I, 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 I had a professor once who was, she was like 28, 29 years old. So we're 10 years older than me, right? And I had stayed late one time. She was, she looked good to me, right? So I stayed late one time and I got an, I, an inkling that she was feeling me like a small smile or something like that. And it became my goal to try to sleep with her. Like mm -hmm. that was my goal. Did you? I accomplished the goal. <laughs> but, did she have a red but, pepper on rate my professor? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't or was she a whack? <laughs> <laughs> or was she a gross? Or she I, don't, beat? I don't think I ever rated. I don't even think I've ever rated my professor. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, they, but that, they that, would have a red pepper if like enough people. Like, oh. Like a word. It was it was hot. to rate their it was to rate how good they were as a professor, but there was also a thing where you could say if they were hot. And then the red <laughs> Oh, I don't even know. Yeah, no, she was she was thick, man. Was red peppers all over this shirt right now? She got a red pepper on you the shirt. Were red pepper, yeah. <laughs> Damn right. I was stacking. Red I think it's pepper. new and exciting though for a guy that can go into a bar in Knoxville and pillage all he wanted to all of a sudden then be online. And have this like you know mis mystery woman too. You, you know what I'm saying? I think yeah, and, and, th and think about it. The internet was like relatively new, right? right? So it, it wasn't like I, the internet when I was in high school was chat rooms and like just yeah. pages and blogs you would go to to read. And so I never really tried to meet with anybody in the chat room. Usually, like that was that ASL age sex location, and so usually just chatting to people, just talking. I never engaged in any of that. But when Facebook came along in 2004, my first year of college, it was just college people talking to each other that mm. was exciting that was like yeah. yo it's just another avenue to try to get what you can get and we did we you know, had a, a, a multiplicity of those but this one was it was just intriguing and so it's like i guess it's just like another avenue man you know what i'm saying but that was back in my younger it, it, and well, wilder days it's still more prevalent than ever catfishing and why is that if we're all so informed it's like it's universal knowledge that it's a thing I think it's more like the psychology behind it is that you have like some confirmation bias. Like you convince yourself like what you you feel real emotions and you like the serotonin released from falling in love with a random person. So mm -hmm. you kind of are in denial. And so I'm yeah. kind of a I, I think I'm pro catfishing. Whoa, <laughs> that's from both. That's a yeah. Than your, <laughs> yeah. Than your, your colors. No, I am. I think so. I'm gonna I, hear you out because I think you're you're <laughs> you. It's it's the same as like getting into WWE or This Is Us or World of Warcraft. Suspension of belief. Like this is us. while you're in it, like you feel good, you're happier. It's probably therapeutic to fall in love. Are you, you a enjoy, narcissist? Well, <laughs> probably a little bit, but <laughs> this is like part of the psychology of somebody catfishing somebody. It's I like think a, it should, I think there uh, should be therapeutic uh, catfishing. You think people should okay. do it as like a job? No, I think it's good for some people. But if it's good for some people, then should we have like people who are like, I will pretend to be a hot woman and let you fall in love with me for like X uh -huh. amount of Because a lot of these victims, they don't want to meet the other person. It's like they, it's like the attachment theory. They subconsciously don't 
They prefer I distance. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's true. Well, know. not in your case because you just wanted to fuck. But like a lot of these no, guys are I like think, I, introverts I think that's, who prefer that's the distance not, and like the mystery. No, nah, I, th- I think a lot of them are introverts who can't meet people in real life or just haven't met people in real life. Uh, find something online and get real hurt by this. Shit. And the reason they don't like they don't question like why they haven't met the person yet, despite them living in the same town for so long, is because they prefer it that way. I don't know, man. I think the the longer I live, the more I understand that not everybody's playing with the same deck of cards, right? And so my social skills, which I deem normal, right? There are certain checklists that I go by in order to like meet my standards of like a good human being, bad human being, real person, not real person, whatever. Like those social skills were developed and I was born with a lot of them. A lot of people don't have those social skills. And so... Mm-hmm. They go on these online communities trying to meet people and they end up getting hurt. You know oh, think yeah. Like- yeah, it's definitely bad. I was kind of kidding about I'm a pro <laughs> no, catfishing, but I understand. I, I think bro. it's good for these people in the moment. Like, I think like it's I got you. It, their life considerably improves because they finally have someone to like w- in a romantic relationship. I would say probably to your point, KB is that a good percentage of this like catfishing is a victimless crime. Like the people who get caught up in it are pretty pathetic going back and forth. And it's a 16 year old girl thinking that she's hitting with a 17 year old boy and it winds up to a 40 year old guy on this side and a 70 year old girl on that side. So just the patheticness (laughs) sort of counteracts, but they're preying on like the most sensitive victims they can, and that's kids, right? Like when you read all the people who died or committed suicide before that, it's almost mm-hmm. exclusively 13-year-old girls. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. and it's like, like, so my kids have had phones since they're 10. So one of the kids in my son's class had gotten into just what I get 10 times a day. Hi, gorgeous, you know, like a DM or something like that. And she has no po- followers, no posts. It's just like a great avatar picture. So one kid... You know, who would ever respond to that 11 year old boy, you know, then takes a picture with his shirt off and says hello. And then the girl comes back and says, I'm going to forward this around your school. I see who you follow. Send me something like, you know, like that's that's, you know, preying on the weak in society. And that's where it becomes a less victimless crime. But otherwise, I think if it's just like goofy shit, I get that serotonin rush sometimes fighting with a commenter. Even though I know I'm yeah. punching the like punching the tide, I get a kick out of sometimes telling somebody to go fuck themselves. Every now and again, I just right. decide to stand ground on a troll. Yeah. Um, and there's a rush to that, right? Like, isn't yeah, that- I'm not talking yeah. about like the actual crime. Yeah, yeah, because um, the crime stuff is bad. Like, yeah, that that's murders. A I don't that's even, murders. And I don't suicides. consider that catfishing. Uh, that's, yeah, but mm. yeah, it's right. <laughs> you're not pro. You're not pro catfish murder. No. Okay, good. Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> get, yeah. get that out of the no. way. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I'm know. not pro catfishing, but <laughs> I you're, think- You're pro catfish for awkward people who- Yes. Can I talk think like to someone on the internet. like introverts who will never probably, sadly, never like find love. Incels. Incels. Because then what? Like imagine they, they get catfish and it's revealed. They feel even more pathetic than they ever did. Is the metaverse one big catfish? Like when you buy your avatar and you show up on that, and it's fucking, pretty much is. You know, I know nothing about the metaverse. I don't, I don't deal in fake worlds. That's, but that's what I mean. Then you know enough to know that it's fucking maybe just a gigantic fake catfish world, right? Yeah. Legalized and subsidized, and people making millions of dollars off it. I, I like yeah. to expand the the definition of catfishing way beyond. You know. Okay. Yeah. Like I do. Like I think sometimes. Like a lot of makeup is somewhat catfit. My avatar mm. on Twitter is five years old. I just yeah. haven't changed it. I don't look like that anymore. <laughs> I think that's sort of cat. Yeah. I think most people's avatars. Catfishing is a spectrum. It's fluid. Yeah. Okay. At, at what point? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. Catfishing is a spectrum. At what point <laughs> do you change your avatar to update what you look like? Like, like, what's the metric? I think legally it should be five years of fifty pounds. <laughs> It should five, be a weight. Five, it should be five a weight years thing. or fifty, 50 pounds. pounds. Yeah, yeah Trevor so I, first. Yeah, if I drop fifty, <laughs> let's go positive. If I drop fifty, I change it. If I gain I'm fifty, unfortunately, so I'm close. Oh, okay. it, you know, I'm going to show I, you my I avatar. Think, I've seen. Have, what is my? I don't think you I've ever changed my avatar. Pretty similar. Yeah, but 
me see. Let me look at your avatar. That's still a little. You know what I mean? That's I a mean, little slimmer. I mean, to me, that looks just like. There's, you, but... there's a lot. There's a lot more egregious ones. You know, Are like a lot of Vaseline on the preaching? lens type stuff. Yeah, I have a preaching. Oh, that's throwing a... Yeah, I got a wine glass on my head. But I think there is a. You know where you should probably start to change. I've seen a lot of people that I've met that I've spoke to online. Then I'll see him at Pump Punk to be like, oh, remember we were just talking on Twitter about something history? I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, shit. You're no, you got to change that picture. You know what no, I mean? that's it's a different true, person. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to police that, though. It is. <laughs> I like that. I like that gauge. Five years or 50 pounds, 50. whichever comes first. Uh, and if, if not, if not hefty. you're catfishing. Yeah, like, what that's about what 20? 20? Nah, twenty pounds. Is, you can. I've been reverse chips. catfish. You you have a good you have a good you have a good holidays. You, can, you that twenty comes fast. You know what I mean? You have a nice little. I'll be changing every six months. Yeah. <laughs> I think fifty and five years is a good gauge. Cool. Has anybody here got catfish? I've catfished. <laughs> My like profile picture is them? is like is me as an eight eight or nine year old boy. All right. And I'm pretty sure I've met up with a girl who never even bothered to ask me what I look like. <laughs> I don't know about catfished. I've been on two dates that I can recall specifically where they did not look like the pictures that they had. Oh, uh, yeah. So not I mean Here. they existed. They were mm -hmm. they were the same person, but angles. Yeah. Let me tell you, yeah, let me tell you something about larger women. Yep. Which I love. I love thick women. Don't get me wrong. Preach. But they they know they know Believe they that. know angles better than most. I didn't say it was that. <laughs> uh, oh, what, what was it? What I was just it? said the, oh. the pictures were so yeah. slightly. I was. They were good pictures. I've been reverse catfish and was equally disappointed as if it like oh. the alternative where she looks a lot better. And then I'm like, I I didn't sign up for this. I don't have the confidence right now at my point of life for you to be this hot. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. You don't want too much the other way like, either. I can't do this. See ya. She sandbagged you. She did. So she came in better than... Much better. That's probably wow. a good strategy. Mm -hmm. Use your worst pictures. Her, yeah, her, her latest Instagram was like 2018, which should have been a red flag. You but... you can't say anything about that. Why, why does it come? Because your most recent Instagram is from, what, 2014? Oh that's, yeah, that's yeah. I guess yeah. Twenty fifteen. Yeah, I guess I am a cafe. That's, that's that's eight years ago, man. It's it's time to. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's just... too long now. Yeah. I'm not gonna do that. No, I mean there there's a I mean in online dating culture there's a thing that girls do where sometimes they show you their B plus pictures first, so then you can be like, well, if he likes me, it might be plus. No, right? Yeah, I'm saying go oh, lower I like, than that. I like yeah. that time. I'm saying yeah. you see. And then oh, if he wow, likes dude. you at C and you show up and, and you're, you're like, an wow, a? yeah. 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 But like girls, like I, like I've, I've done that where it's like, oh, like I'll throw a B in and see what happens. Girls always look better in person to me because I don't make extended eye contact long enough to truly analyze and gauge what their face looks like. In person or? I prefer the in-person broad. Yeah. <laughs> Do you make <laughs> eye contact with girls in person though? Yeah, but I never, I never let it linger. No. So yeah, if you have any blemishes, I wouldn't know. <laughs> so where are you looking most of the time? That's what I'm saying. This is real creepy. Their vibes, kicks, bro. yeah, On yeah. First nah. date? <laughs> looking at their kicks, just seeing what kind of shoes they rock. Mm, okay. Like, imagine going to a date, somebody just staring at your shoes the whole time, bro. That's, that's weird happened to some oh, man. Yeah, that's happened to several girls. <laughs> We've gone on a date with KB. Mm -hmm. Have you have you killed anybody, man? <laughs> <laughs> Not to be sexist yeah. though, but so mad dog, <laughs> mad dog. Like you, you have a you have a natural beauty to you. Thank you like, so much. So wh where do you see the premium in all of a sudden throwing on like a shitload of makeup and meeting a guy and not looking like like Madeline? Like you know what I mean? Like where do you see so that catfishing. premium? I, I guess, or, just or in, you know, the, on the low the low spectrum of it. Like the first time that we go out, you decide to really. Put it on to a point where you know that if we started a relationship, I can't, you would not I can't be, uphold that. You yeah, it wouldn't be consistent with right. It. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you want to. I think I think people do that same thing with their personalities, though, a little bit. Like you show your That's best side facts. of yourself, right. and then once you get comfortable with someone, you know, you start to show more of your real self. I try not to do that. I also like I act like I go on dates. I don't, but I try. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to That's do that. It's kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 
What are you doing? What are you doing next Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> but like I I I get I get the you want to impress someone. I get that to the point where you're like almost ir- like unrecognizable as your own self. That part I don't get as much, but like I get wanting to give your A game the first couple times. But yeah, it is one of those things where it's like you can't uphold that premium forever. Yeah. Um, but I do think people do that like with, you know, with their personality or like, you know, those little white lies that you tell on dates like, oh, you make, you know, 10,000 more than you actually do or like stuff like that. So I think that people can do that in other facets as well as the way they look. I don't know how guys would do that as much. I mean, maybe if you guys like or maybe if you like wore really nice clothes and you really don't wear nice clothes, like it would be. Oh, There's something called hat, something called hat fishing. Yeah, when you cut oh, with your the hair? hairline. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, AJ. Right. But like, fuck your hair. I'm not saying that. I'm having a tough day. I have females, <laughs> like, females, I have, females I know have mentioned it. I got hat fished. <laughs> yeah, like I, I can see that, but also like if Arian, like I know Arian well enough to know that he'll never ever wear anything that isn't like sweatpants or you know a, a t-shirt and shorts. So if like right. Arian went on a first date, like with someone and showed up in a three-piece suit i'd be like and then you know and then you actually go on a couple more dates with him and he shows up in like his sweatpants like it you can kind of do that i guess it's definitely different for girls though but yeah no it's different for millionaire and a fellows too right that's all i mean that's also true yeah, yeah that's uh, that but- that is also true but i i don't know i try to keep it even keeled i also now there's an there's enough things of me talking on the internet where i, I don't think i can like, oh yeah fool people yeah like yeah you can i mean like if you're a first date tomorrow you what do you do like if you're going out with some girl you want to impress how do you prepare because you can do a lot more right like you're yeah. like okay i could throw these on i, I can throw get this my on. eyebrows waxed what do you do mustache wax like what do you do for your first date you shave and what it oh, yeah I, i've only those. i've only had a beard recently but i wear i mean i wear to work basically what i would wear to a first date Same. like mm-hmm. khaki shorts polo a hat I no, did. see, I actually, I won't wear, I wear a hat every day, but like on a first, like five dates, I, I, I just feel like, yeah, I actually remember asking my girlfriend after we'd been going out for a while, I was like, I wore a hat one time and I was like, just so you know, like I usually wear, I wear a hat hats every single day, but I haven't worn one with you. That's almost like, like nice. Like, yeah. I was like, can I wear hats now? And she's like, yeah. And I was yeah. like, perfect. It's almost like a sign of respect. <laughs> You get I didn't up. ask. I was just like, I usually wear a hat every day. Like, I feel like we've been going out long enough now that like I can wear hats. That'd be it's funny respectful. if she like, like in her text message today with her girl, she's like, this fucker wears a hat every day. Yeah. <laughs> well, now she knows. I won't take it off. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, Aaron, you don't you don't dress it up. You don't you don't all of a sudden nah, try to impress, nah, go out to like spend a lot of money on what you're wearing and what you look and fit is. No, sir. I do. Fuck I, I think that's that's reserved. Flip flops. If I can't get in with flip flops and sweats, I just don't belong there. Really? Yeah, I don't hate I've, that. Yeah. It's just comfort to me because, like, I used to like when I was in the league. I used to like, I used to dress to the nines. I had a bow ties and with the boot. But like halfway through me being in the NFL, I was like, yo, this is uncomfortable. Like sitting on planes or going on buses or whatever. Like it's uncomfortable. You get your drawers get all wedged up. The hard bottom shoes hurt my feet. So I'm like, what? Who am I doing this for? Because mm. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I just enjoy dressing. But I was like, I got to the point when I didn't like it anymore. I was like, fuck this shit. So I just started wearing shit that was comfortable. And so that's like, I've 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 had women when I was dating in the past who would be like, yo, like, were well, you gonna dress up? And I'm like, nah, this is this is what you get. Like, this is this is where I'm at with it. <laughs> so that you're the opposite of a catfish. Uh, yeah, I'm a casual trout. Yeah. By the way, I looked up catfishing and I got a bunch of videos of those girls who stick their hands in the catfish mouths. Oh, grab yeah. the noodling. It's yeah, a gang noodle. of do- uh, that is yeah, fucking. Yeah, did you see the guy? Who, you see me do it? You've done noodling. Yeah. Wait, man. what is noodling? Say, say it again. What so, is, what is it? like catfishing, if you're actually going after catfish, these big motherfuckers, it's called noodling, and you're in like waist deep water. You find a hole where they lay eggs, and then the male is there protecting the eggs. You reach your hand in, these males, they're usually at the low end, like 40-pound catfish. They'll grab onto your hand. You'll grab onto their gills from the inside and rip them out of a hole. There's like some girl with a bikini who does what's called noodling. Some girl in a bikini who does it who pulled like an 80-pound catfish out. It's, it's. I mean, it has nothing to do with this, but it's absolutely (laughs) hillbilly hand fishing, they call it too. It's noodling and hillbilly hand fishing. 
I mean, it's, that's a big first date. It used to be a show. Oh, was it? Yeah, I, that's how I know about it because my dad and I used to watch it. And okay, you just stick your hand in there and hope something terrifying. Yeah, it's terrifying. Nope. Like, what if a snapping turtle's no. in there? Well, there's Take a fucking wrist. There's what, a video. What if a catfish is in there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a video on Instagram of some guy doing it, and he looks exactly like me. Oh, really? To a T. <laughs> Do you guys play videos on? Yeah, we can. can you mm-hmm. cut this in. Do you don't have to cut it in? I just want to show Maddie. Okay, let me see. Text it to the uh, group chat. I'm not in the group chat. <laughs> send, send. Is it a like a, tw- just, a tweet? It's an Instagram. Yes, yeah, send it to me. All right. The typical weight for a flathead catfish caught by noodling is 40 pounds, but the record for an Oklahoma lake catfish was caught by noodling weighed 80, 88 pounds and was 54 inches long. Nope. It's like pulling za out of a <laughs> fucking hole. <laughs> Imagine yeah, that. That is insane. Yeah. Wow. Do they eat them or do they just they just I think it's catch and release, like, but I mean catfish are good eating. You just yeah, it's they're, they're tough to skin. Good. You gotta like nail them to a tree to take the skin mm-hmm. off. Really? Yeah. Why would you well, go through all that like why would you go through all that work to catch and release a catfish yeah, though? It's, it's an excellent Instagram, you know, post. I guess. That's where Holy catfishing shit. got its name, like the one we're talking about. Some guy did you see did you ever read that? There's a myth that you had to ship a catfish with a like a container of live cod. Like cod is one of the most eaten fish in the world, codfish, mm. fish and chips and shit. The myth is that if cod were shipped with catfish in the same tanks to keep the cod active, it would ensure the quality of the cod, where if the cod were just alone, they became pale and lethargic. So the myth originated oh, back in like 1913. Yeah. So they say you throw a catfish in like with some boring cod and it gets some fucking riled up. And that's where catfishing came from. Wow. It's a little bit wild. I'm very mm-hmm. fish. And that, and that was yeah. and that yeah. was a positive all around. I think so. To your point. Better to yeah. my point where. Live yeah, it up. It could work. Yeah. Except when regulate kids regulate it. Yeah. No kids. <laughs> get it. No kids involved. Um, right. I remember uh, watching. Um, Naked is it naked and afraid, oh, where that. they would be like in sub Saharan Africa and there would be like no water sources but just like this little pond. And then, but in that little, it's not even a pond, it'd be like a just a trough, like a small little water source. There'd be like 30 catfish in there randomly. Like, I'm like, how the fuck is that a thing? I don't know enough about catfish or the terrain. I don't either. That was always weird to me. Yeah. You think I would? I did a little bit yeah, of legwork, not enough. I was, always, yeah, I was yeah. hoping, I was hoping you was the <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, not me. <laughs> Least outdoors. I got an idea. Here. We'll go. We we'll go. Go around and give me your top answer. Give me your the number one sign that you're being catfished. I'll start. Okay. It's the easy one, but it's it have it's just a personal experience. Like they won't they won't hop on a video call. They won't hop on. Yeah, a, that's on, that's they like they the main thing that the catfish show highlight is like that. Was, their yeah. webcam was always broken. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't hop on. Anybody else got? Every time I've rule? seen pictures from like an account that was like, you know, just somebody totally different that was catfishing or something, they always have a weird like tint to them. They they look like uh-huh. they're they it's they look just a little so, bit off. Grainy. Yeah, n- it, not even grainy, but like a the color is a little bit off. The co- yeah, it's like, it's, it's like it, they're it's just filtered. They're bad pictures. It's almost a picture right. of a picture. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's that's a good way to put it. It's deep fried. Which mm-hmm. that that tells me like that's like uh, Indian Russian men, Eastern Europeans. Yeah, like they don't have the full internet. <laughs> what? <laughs> Like, they don't have the yeah. They don't have the full G. internet. Yeah, yeah. Partial, <laughs> partial internet. But yeah, yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, 100. percent I think it is almost like pictures of pictures, right? Yeah. Like yeah. You're pulling it off. And if it's Instagram, it's so obvious. You have to yeah. go. You just check their tagged photos. If there's anything, do they get comments from friends or are they like right. bot comments? Mm. Yeah. Hi, sexy. That's how most of them start off, and I know right away. Not, not that yeah. I'm sexy, but they mm. don't know it yet. Came across your profile, and you have <laughs> yeah, a beautiful yeah. smile. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ! Well, I feel like now. Kind of nice, actually. <laughs> I feel like now, though, like in the Instagram age, it's pretty. E- if you have some semblance of common sense, it's pretty easy to spot who's a cat, or not even a catfish, but a bot. You think you do if you're 11? 
Um, yeah, nah, I think no, no. I'm, I'm, ask, I, I'm so. honestly I'm asking. I don't know. I'm no. honestly asking because the kids think, are no, I think they're smarter than you. I, I think an 11 year old would be able to tell smart. before a 40 year old. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Also, I'm on the, that. The, the risk. No, maybe not. Like Eleven's less young. of a like yeah, like 11, 12. Like it's just like it's a risk as a young boy's young little horny boy. I'm yeah. willing to take that risk. Yes. She, that she might think I'm sick. You know yeah, what I mean? Like as as a youngin, I'm I'm willing to take that risk. You'll never know if you're not willing to find out. But your point though is, Respect. what about me in two years, in twenty years, and I'm seventy and I'm still on Instagram? Like, do then like the deep fakes, and she actually can get on, and start talking to me, you know, like just the deep fake videos and stuff. I might get. I don't got, think it's old age. I think it's just familiarity. Like you, you've grown, like you've spent years on Instagram. You won't ever fall right. for it, even if you are like demented. <laughs> <laughs> but like, even I think grandparents now like my grandparents used to get wrapped up into it like those calls that you would get granted it's a little bit different but the calls you would get pretending that they were getting audited or getting you know there was a warrant out for their arrest over taxes and stuff like old people fall for that the shit big every one day. fairly That's recently too, was yeah, was they'd call old people and say like uh that they were their grandson or something like they'd find out through facebook yeah, what it's always that what your your grandkid's name was and they'd be like hey grandma i'm in jail i yeah. need like four thousand yeah. dollars yeah. or whatever the yeah. gift cards are huge like yep. walmart has to put signs up like don't buy the gift card if you're getting scammed trista yeah people mom, people here get scammed all trista greeting, get catfish? Of, greeting of the yeah. season to Tristan yeah, the catfish yeah, at that time? Yeah. Or is we expanding the definition? Like I said, is that, uh, is that catfish? Is that just trickery? That's financial just, catfish? No. Yeah, that's I a think, scam. Think, that's yeah, scam. I'm scamming, nah. yeah. Jersey but, Jerry I mean, I think, is definitely I think it is. Catfish. I think if you're pretending yeah. to be somebody else with the intent on relations or financial gain, I feel like it's a form of catfish for sure. Yeah, like does catfish? Um, I feel like catfishing might have to include a romantic... Or it's just like a subset of grifting that's just yeah. evolved over the years. Are Instagram filters catfishing? Instagram like I, filters? Like mm. TikTok filters. Every time I hit up a TikTok they or whatever, and it's some girl, there's always something like hazel eyes yeah. or something like that. Hazel eyes is my favorite one. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if I could just look at TikTok and not allow that and mm. see every one of them just not. Because these Take filters that. are that fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fi the filters that, are, are miracle you know workers. Yeah. You oh, might I have know. just fixed, in my head, you fixed a lot of the internet, dog. If you could have an option to not see filters, mm. that would change everything. Wow, that's actually brilliant. Right. I love Thank that you, right? idea. Yeah, Look at yeah me. no, that uh, shit No, was, I think that, that was, just, I don't know. Could do you use them? Do I use filters? Have you ever used a filter? I don't really image? post pictures that's of myself, right. yeah. so no. You? Um, you use I Hazel not, Eyes? I, I use Hazel Eyes on TikTok sometimes, but also I don't post anything on my personal TikTok to public. It's all friends only. Uh, Avery uses a lot of them, I know. Yeah. You use filter? I no, mean, I use the cat used ones if I'm with my daughter. Yeah. You never use like a- Not wait, like, what do you, it, what do unless it was like a funny one on Snapchat why, or something. Why would, like, say why, hypothetically, why would a guy? That's what like, I'm to saying. To make them look better? Like I, would, I, I, I was about to say that 90% of them- you're using filters? No, no, I'm kidding. Oh. I was going to say 90% of them are probably women, but I don't think that's true either. I think everybody in the uh, Sway House yeah. uses fucking filters. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's also filters because there's like filters on TikTok specifically that you just like smooth out your face. Like we're not doing anything too crazy. We're just smoothing things out. I'm and fine with it. I, I don't but give it's a cat. shit. A filter, I don't. But I, is that just cat. But is no, that cat? Is, cat. is that catfishing though? No. Or is that cat. just by zero means catfishing? Cat. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. Cat it's catfishing, fishing, right? but it's, it's like cat. It's the same thing as me putting on like makeup, which is not cat. Which is also cat. No, it's that's cat too. I'm a big proponent of no makeup. I At I all? tell like None? women, hear me out. Women that I've been involved with know this. Like you are more beautiful to me without makeup. Uh, it's and just I'm not, not true. I'm You're not like sure. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. I know that's just that. It just sounds super simpish, and it sounds here you go trying to get. Sick. I'm telling you, dog. To me, my personal preference is no makeup. I love natural with no makeup, dog. That's I just think you're more palatable to me to my taste. Like when I see women with makeup, and especially when it's caked on, it's like an ill to me. It's an ick. I also yeah. think men are kind I don't of don't like the shit. Men men sometimes get tricked by women saying like the no makeup makeup look, like yeah, like I and try they to do make it, it, and they, they outline other shit. Yeah, man. Yeah, I try to make it look like I'm not wearing makeup, and then mm -hmm. yeah, and then you're what like, you oh man. I think it, even then I'll take a little bit of a makeup. Like, yeah, like I'm not like trying to like bunch. make myself look like you kind of just got to look alive sometimes. I want you as when you wake up in the morning and your breath stink. That's how that's how I want you. 
I want you like that. That's how I am now. I love that. I love that ninja. You love that. I think 90% of women women look the worst. They're worst on their wedding day when they decide to go uber fucking makeup and all like, and dress up like the snow princess and all that (laughs) shit. Honestly, I think that's when they're at their worst. I don't mind a little bit of makeup, but like, I don't like if a girl can't. Like, give me a hug if I'm wearing a white shirt. Right, because then you'll just like, like have half half the face. That, the or if we turn. kiss, and now my lips got shit on it. Like, I, I didn't yeah. sign up for this, bro. What? That's the only like reason I got shit. married. I was rooting too many shirts. Yeah. Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Crawling all over large. Kicked up, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. I also think it's like, it's a, it, like what Aaron, it's like very much like preferential thing. But sure. I don't know. I also can't, like, I, I, it's like gross to have on my face. Like I just get like, I touch it's it and then gross like, to have on your face, Maddie. We all work on it. What you mean? No, 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 no. Like to have so much makeup on your own oh, face. Oh, oh, oh! I thought you said it's gross to have on my face. I'm like, no, what? No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like in terms of a feel thing. Like, no, I got you. No, I couldn't imagine having yeah. to put every day to like it's a part of your routine. Like you gotta yeah. wake up and put that man. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. What I if I wore a, a wig? That's at, like out People of all these guys though. here, I wear a wig. Yeah. So I'll go out on a weekend. I went uh, to a wig store, Tiffany Wigs, and I got a high end wig. And uh, as I'm in the shop getting fitted for it, a person with cancer came in right. and to get fitted. So I was mm-hmm. so fucking embarrassed that I was like, all right, wrap this up. Mm-hmm. Uh, what does it cost? I'll meet you at the register. I get up to register. It's like seven fifty. Like it was mm-hmm. just an eight hundred dollar wig, yeah. and I wear it all the time, like as a joke. But I'll wear it to dinner with couples, just because yeah. I find it to be funny and I find it to be a little exciting. It's all I can do. I got no fucking options yeah. at all anymore. I'm just, yeah. You know, that- I look like a thumb. But like, so that's what a guy can do. We could catfish with wigs. But like, I mean, guys have toupees. Yeah. yeah. And look how, how you felt when you when you wear the wig. It is a joke, but you did. It's kind of cool. It's a, it's a thrill and yeah. an excitement. To- then that's what catfishers do. They take on a different persona. Yeah. And a lot of barstool sports, like people can be assessed the same way. Uh, they put on a fake persona. Maybe I, feel like you, I feel like you've catfished somebody before, bro. Me? Me. KB. KB. Yeah. KB's got it. No. Yeah. No. I'm I feel like straight you shooter. Like you're, you're, yeah. you're, 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 def- you're, you're defending the, the psychology of it and shit. I uh, am. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just I saying, saying I get why. Like a lot of people watch catfish and they can't like fathom how it happened or why it happened. You get it. I get what was going on mentally. Yeah. I think some people like really narcissistically like to see people like emotionally invested in them. Like, I uh, think yeah, that's I think that's natural. Yeah. Well, I think it's weird is almost like the people who pull, like try to catch the people. Like Neve? I've always been off put by vigilante types who want to insert themselves and like catch others doing something heinous. Yeah, I wasn't put on this world to be a goalie, but. Like, I keep going back to that fucking point. Like, I got 11 year old girls on Instagram and we see all her shit. We see my son Uh, as a my my one going to college this week. We don't see his shit anymore. He's good. The one who's just going into a sophomore in high school. We no longer see his shit, but we have access to it because he's mine. I pay for his shit. My little girl, I see everything. Uh, as you should, yeah. But a lot of people don't. I can't tell you how many of her friends have open Instagram accounts. So they're getting the same type of stuff that, you know. Age 11? Yeah. Yeah, no. The parents should 12, see no. that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's yeah. that's the only vigilante shit. I, like, Lisa Ann gave me her phone once. And I looked at her fucking DMs. Like, and it's not good, man. <laughs> like, this oh, is, yeah. you know, like that type of stuff. That's the only time I feel like. We should catch some of those guys and throw them in the volcano. And I don't yeah, give a so fuck what K- people do. Yeah. KB, KB, I want you to expound on that a little bit. Because I, I feel you. And it's also why I don't like Batman. I think Batman might be the worst superhero of all time. Um, but but expound on that a little bit. Also, you don't like the when, I, when I'm on a show or a podcast, I will s- say things just to say it. Because you need to, you need to, we're in a take culture where you need to have an extremist take. But I am creeped out by like the vigilante types who devote their life to catching others, even if they only have a hunch that they're doing something wrong. Then they try to insert themselves to be like the hero for the victim, and then they get all up in their personal life. I think it's kind of okay. weird. Okay. I'm with you. So what about cats like to catch a predator? Shit like that. Yeah, and that well, that spawned a lot of like people doing it on their own, which I think is 
very odd. So you have these people who are pretending to be 14 year old girls, which I think is weird texting these guys for days and then like catching them. Like I got you. That is a weird dynamic. That's just a weird, that's not your role. I don't think catching them cats. You have to like, like, they have a hero fetish. Pretend to be into it. Then you have to, you also, you're also sexting another person as a 14 year old. So you're, uh, it's weird. No, I I agree Uh, with that. The vigilantism is pretty weird. Yeah. 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 So we all agree. Batman is shit. Fuck Batman. Yeah, fuck Batman. Yeah, Batman is ass. I get into it all the time. People on Twitter about that shit, too. Batman is so whack. He's not even a superhero, dog. He's just a fucking he's rich. dweeb. Yeah, he's rich. God, he's just, a, he's just a dweeby. Yeah, dweeby rich dude who could do more by buying a school, but he'd just rather beat up poor people. It's just weird, right? He's a fucking Same thing dweeb. with Iron Man, then? Iron Man's Marvel's no, Batman. No, 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 no. Oh, you fuck with Iron Man. G- Iron Man is a genius that his, <laughs> his genius actually helps society for the better because the don't technology like, he develops he don't he don't go around beating up like petty criminals like he goes around actual villains he fights batman's over here like joker or like you know what i'm saying catching people in the mugging in the alley like shit like that like, you know what I mean? batman's such a marvel bias no 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 iron man is iron man is a genius absolutely but mm-hmm. uh anybody got any other hot catfish takes man I think I got mine off. <laughs> you did. I don't know if I agreed with anything I said this entire podcast, but yeah, we, man, you hard to pin. You got you got you to just throw out opinions. Sometimes they're who bad. is yeah. KB? I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more research because from this podcast, I still have no fucking clue, man. <laughs> I was just saying whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you so you think I kind of agreed with some of that? I don't know. You think a 19 year old from Hawaii who was an Eagle Scout and a Mormon? Got catfished. Oh, are you saying like there's more to the story? No, I'm just saying. Uh, like the, was this Manti Teo? Yeah. Oh, like shit. Like we I talk about how easy fucking 11 oh. year olds get caught. We talk about how easy like people who are 70 and just get on Facebook and get caught. And then we talk about stupid people who can get caught up in it. And there's pathetic people who almost want to get caught up in it. But what about somebody who's, you know, 19. Yo, explain the whole 19. Man, real quick, man. Explain the whole Manti Teo shit to me real quick because I don't really ever, I never looked into the story. I heard about something about catfishing and Manti Teo and I think he was around the same age I was so maybe I played against him. I don't know. But he was a, little, was a, bit he was a little later than you. A little later. Okay, so I know it's like a big deal. Mm. Hit me with it. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember the story. So would I be biased in hitting with the story? Do you want to do it? You're a Notre Dame hater, right? Uh, I don't know about hater. I didn't. I didn't hate them before, like a month ago, when they beat UT in the in the super regionals. But I, so he, uh, he was the star linebacker in Notre Dame. I believe he was like a Heisman finalist. Yeah, two thousand nine. Yeah, he came to us. He came to Notre Dame. People were fucking pumped about him coming. He was going to go to USC. He wound up chose, uh, choosing Notre Dame, and he was a stud. I mean, you can talk about Notre Dame's schedule and all that kind of shit, and I, I'm not going to argue that. But then he made it to the national championship game 2012, in 2012. They go undefeated. Yeah. And the whole season, he had this story that his grandmother and girlfriend had died on the same day. I believe, like, right at the beginning of the season, like September or something. September 11th, he said they had died. September 11th, they both died on the same day. You know, you remember yeah. that 11th type thing. So his, his grandmother and his grandpa. His grandmother. grandmother. Yeah. Okay. And he went through okay. the season. He had a great season. And so then he was, I think he, he finished second in the Heisman behind Johnny, Johnny Football, right? I think Manziel won that year? Manziel did win in 2012. Yeah. yeah. So he was one of three people who invited a downtown athletic club or wherever the fuck it was then, came in second in Heisman voting. And then somewhere along the line, it leaks that this girlfriend of his never existed. And then that it was this guy, homosexual guy who, who had a crush on Manti that developed the whole thing. And Manti had said, though, in the past that he'd actually met her when he really didn't. Yeah. And then it, you know, came out in like a Costas interview that he, when he had found out that he had been catfished, he didn't come forward with it immediately because out of embarrassment, you know, because again, he's now a 20 year old guy, you know, who got got. And my, my point is, is that, is it because of his upbringing? Like an Eagle Scout means you're pretty straight laced. The Mormon has all that baggage that goes along with it. Like perhaps like 
because people thought that it was bullshit that he made up that story so it would sound better in the um, One Shining Moment video before he goes up for the Heisman. Uh -huh. But I don't think that's true at all either. Did oh, you I, think yeah, that I don't, he was complicit? Uh, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't say that. I don't, it's it's a very odd story. But yeah, I think the Mormon thing definitely probably has more to do with it than well, anything. And, and he's extremely naive. The most plausible theory, I think, would that he's gay. Right, Manti. Yeah, Manti there. Or he's well, he's now now he's married. With a kid. He's now married to like an Instagram model with a yeah. kid. By or, may, maybe greatest, you know, greatest beard in the world. Yeah, maybe it was. <laughs> that's the only thing that makes sense to me because he mm. wouldn't want people to know that he's actually gay when he's a college football star. Hmm. But there was all this and, and Mormon. Takes, man. <laughs> but I know. But like, why is this superstar linebacker? Why is he not fucking girls around campus? Why is he never? At, why is he not? Why isn't he into girls? Oh yeah, I have a girlfriend. Yeah, out of out in front of it. She goes to a different school. And she's that's cancer. what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't I think know. He probably was fucking other other females though. Ain't you no know saying that he wasn't. I think I think I think what Laura said is probably more like he he probably got a guy and was just like super embarrassed about it. That makes a lot of sense for that. Wait, long? Which, but that's like that's the whole thing. Yeah. Like I want like we're you know, know we're so yeah. street yeah. smart. But he, then he, what, what was, <laughs> why did he fucking, why would he fake the death? No, no, this yeah. guy faked the death but, on him. Right. So he was, he's never met this girl. They had like this, they, these chats, like these deep chats where they really got to know each other. So, they consider themselves like exclusive. And he had said, like, somebody was like, oh, you, you're dating this girl. You never met her. He's like, no, no, I met her once. Total lie. But maybe he did it just because he was embarrassed that he had this online relationship. Right, like, this guy right, said right. all the right things to this naive fucking Eagles, a uh, Hawaiian Eagle scout, you know. And meanwhile, he's he's at a, you know, a college where, you know, he had to perform. Yeah. Like, he was very well, busy. So how did he find how did he find out that she died or I think the whole time she she was said to have had cancer and then Jeez. and i believe manti teo said that he was with her like when she died or like the day before something like that i don't want to be wrong about that but i believe he said that well the whole thing yeah. is, is centering around this documentary right, right. that's right. dropping next week about time yeah and i we i have him on as, for an interview after this okay you got an interview with the producer right yeah with the two producers oh, no. yeah yeah so and i even think like the news of her death came from her cousin who, Fake, uh, yeah, yeah. And that was the guy who's been doing it the whole time. He was the catfisher. He was the dude. Hey, Arian, I have a question. What if before you found out you were being catfished, someone reached out to you and said, hey, this is my sister, daughter. She has passed away. How would you react? Like, damn, sorry for your loss. Yeah, you wouldn't publicize it or anything. I mean, would nah, I was trying to. I was trying to. No, I had never met her. So I was like, I, it, I was I was trying to hit. So it wasn't. Just there was no emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we wasn't having like deep conversation. It was just like sexual you know, kid shit. Yeah, shit like that. Nice, <laughs> nice <kid> shit. <laughs> Do you remember how embarrassed that guy was? Do you remember Manti when that That's whole thing tough. went down? That's that was like, and that was like it, it wasn't tough. certainly tough. before social media, but ten years ago it was very different. Mm -hmm. Like if that story no, breaks today. Was, Yes, yeah, I mean, it's a weird. it was a massive deal. I, we was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, this, that, and the other. But like, it would have if that broke right now, that would be the top trend on Twitter for weeks, and nah, it would be yeah, it would, it. How about weeks. It, it was it maybe a, maybe a day or two. It was a huge yeah. deal. Yeah, it's, no, I, it, I mean, I he guess, was he was one of the best players in college football. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, him. Uh, being embarrassed, like I think that's also the culture has changed too. Because now, if you tell somebody I met my girl online, they're like, "Oh, okay, that's what's up." But back then, it was like, "Ooh, you better." Yeah, online. there was like, a you know what I'm saying. It was, now it's, it's very big thing. Now it's now it's like, "Oh, that's dope." What what app? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But and so he was probably super embarrassed. I think the culture of the internet was entirely different back then. Like that shit sucks though. How many people I mean, I do you think imagine. have that relationship without ever meeting a girl? Like I'm, and I'm lot, le a lot, legitimately a lot. curious. Do you think that there are a lot of Manti non catfishy relationships that are real oh, yeah. that you don't see so. them for the first six months you're dating? I think so. Yeah. Just pictures, yeah. Yeah. and now it's the FaceTime yeah. is so easy. You yeah. can, it's almost yeah, like again. you know, take your top off, mm -hmm. right. yeah, you. take them off. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like honestly, it's the easiest yeah. thing in the world. But yeah, you yeah. Know. I think that's way more prevalent than you would think. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because back then he was he was embarrassed as shit.
And I mean, I mean, it was one of the most embarrassing things humans have ever, a human being has ever done. As you're going into the draft, as you're <laughs> playing yeah. a national championship <laughs> game. It doesn't get worse than that. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I remember that. I was like 12. Like, no. No, I mean, that's that's a hard one. That's a hard one to come back from. And it's like, that. So, yeah, that's a year of your whole to career. Sonia Hausen of Stanford University and Ruben Thomas of the University of New Mexico. Forty uh, percent of heterosexual couples that got together in the U.S. in 2017 met online. 17. Yeah, I believe. I still that. think yeah. that's very different, though, than like getting in a relationship. Like you talked on a dating app and then you went out. Like yes. I think that's different than oh, much talking different. to someone exclusively on the internet that you've never met. Right, but is it? But so you're Not saying that it's more normal couples. for it's me right couples. now to be dating somebody in Minnesota and never seeing her? Is it more normal it's for me to do that? It's more prevalent. Yeah. It's, still, it's still weird to me. Is it still weird? I, I think I it's not, weird. To weird, not, yeah, yeah, that's not a relationship. Okay, think think about this, though. Think about this. Like, you was growing up large. When I was growing up large, when we used to meet people, we used to have to, like, run into them, bump into them, happen to meet them at a gym, a library, a restaurant, whatever the case may be. Our our radius and which where, and where we can meet people was extremely small. And so the odds of you finding somebody you really click with are lessened. Nowadays, you can literally filter in what you're interested in, what your hobbies are, what your likes, your dislikes. So the radius in which and the amount of people that you can meet is a lot more vast. So the odds of you finding somebody that you really like are higher, but the odds of them being local are lower. And so you can meet somebody you can really click with good point. at a lot higher rate, but they might not be there. And so maybe you click with somebody who's across the country yeah. and and it was like, let's, you know, do this long distance thing until we can figure something out. That to me makes a lot more sense. Could you see yourself doing, I mean, having a more efficient net, but throwing it over a bigger lake, like you're saying, sounds yeah. great. But could you see yourself, Aaron, now, like dating somebody so in my my girl now, my girl right now, um, we probably did long distance. Granted, it, it was different. She works. She's a teacher. Um, I'm retired. And so like I would I would travel back and forth to where she was from. But like we did long distance for probably a good four or five months. So you months. were still seeing her on a you regular never basis. Met her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 he... no, no. We met we met through a mutual friend, actually. And you and touched so her. And I, then she I, went I away for five her. months. Yeah. And then I, I would come back like pretty much every month I would be in her city. Yeah, that's different. But yeah. what I'm saying is I can see how somebody, ooh, two people who have jobs and they working, mm. they come come home. Like there, there's shit like we used to do, like that was cute, it was fucking romantic. We come home, I, I'd order her a bottle of wine. She'd have a bottle of wine waiting on her doorstep when she when she get there. We we have a date night. We both turn on the same movie at the same time. One, two, three, go. We watch the same movie. Have a, that's, that's, that's fucking cute, you know what I mean? Yeah. And people can do shit like that nowadays, where back in the day you couldn't do shit like that. So I, I get it's a lot easier to do, and you can have phone sex. You know what I'm saying? Or I can see you getting off to me, you you getting off to you, or me. Uh, you know what I mean? Like don't don't, <laughs> don't look at me come ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, don't watch me come. <laughs> Never. Uh, yeah. Somebody might like it, KB. Yeah, you know I, 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 talk about angles <laughs> for me. Don't I have had that fucking thing on a revolving stop sign. <laughs> Give me more angles. <laughs> and my and my top just learned not to kink shame, man. Whatever people are into, they into, man. It is what it is. Unless it hurts somebody else. I think we're all we all realize that we are some variation of a catfish or catfishy. Yes. I think yeah. I think I think in I think in uh in general, yeah, Big T. I think in general um we like to advertise ourselves in our in our best light and yeah. it's also why i don't dress up anymore because i don't feel the need to anymore i feel like my personality is enough to like me and so all the rest of this shit is what you see is what you get man so Same i'm off being yourself yeah, Same yeah with i'm me. off it. You, nine, you still wear the wig though? Yeah, nine inch cock helps too. You know what I'm saying? Nine, yeah. <laughs> that there you go. Lay that, that thing. Lay that thing down. That's what I call there you, Lord. There you go, Snowball. <laughs> yeah. We didn't even touch on I, dicks. Yeah, we didn't touch on that dicks I, yet. Yeah, almost did the yeah. prison part. Is that what they call you, Large? No, absolutely. But they, if that was the case, they call me Light Switch. <laughs> I don't got a ton to work with, bro. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Okay, we welcome on two very special guests. Uh, they're here to promote uh, the season two of Untold, excuse me, volume two, 
Untold Volume 2, releasing on Netflix weekly beginning August 16th, 2022. That would be coming up just in a couple of weeks here, like a week and a half. It's Chapman and McLean Way. They join us uh, via Zoom. Thank you guys for coming on today. Um, very excited to talk to you about a, a couple different things that you've been working on. Mostly the, the Manti Teo story is one of the more fascinating stories in sports of the last 30 years. And it's like a, a, a perfect combination of um, things that I care about, which is sports and then internet culture and kind of the ways that uh, the internet has like warped a lot of people's minds now uh, and, and catfishing in general. So thank you guys for, for joining us. Um, would you say that like the Manti Teo story is one of the more uh, insane topics to do a documentary on? Absolutely. I mean, Mac and I have like a word document of stories and characters that like we love and that we hope to one day do a documentary on. And the the Manti Teo saga was on that list, regardless of it being a sports documentary or not. And so um, it was such a bizarre story at the time. It was funny at the time, too. There was like tons of memes. No one knew what the hell was going on. Um, and Mac and I just like had this instinct. Like, I feel like there's probably more to the story than was was documented at the time you know there's all these tabloid headlines and like a lot of like surface level kind of like introspection on what was going on and so mac and i were like man we should a lot of catfishing documentaries kind of focus on the victim which is interesting but no one really dives into like the people behind the scandal and why they did what they did and we reached out to naya um who's kind of like never really talking about this um online profile that she built that she used to catfish manti and just came across this like incredibly like nuanced thought-provoking uh story and journey of her life and then so we got that then we got manti on board to talk about his journey in life and it just makes for a really 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 interesting story it does yeah yeah we we, we kind of talk about these stories like especially this one being like a little bit of like a white whale in sports documentary filmmaking there was like definite an element of like when we were first talking not directly to Manti but the people like his agents and managers so to speak and like I we got it we totally understood but there was kind of like a yeah get in line like type of like <laughs> response and attitude like we got we get you know we'll throw your pitch into the pile of other pitches we get um, but eventually like we did connect with Manti and Naya directly and just kind of build like a little bit of a relationship of like trust and 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 promise them we would interview them at length with like full context of what this was and it's it's been almost 10 years for them. So they have like the added benefit of having grown through it and matured and developed and they have 10 years hindsight on it all. So that's when I think we really felt, man, this is going to be a pretty special documentary to make. Yeah. I think that um, in this case, Manti was, all, is it Manti, Manti Teo? He was, he was uh, like the victim. Yes. But there was also like a lot of questions. I remember reading the article on Deadspin when it first came out and I was thinking to myself like, well, he's, he's definitely like, he knew, but still kind of continued to play along with it or like allow other people to play along with it. Maybe he was embarrassed. That's a natural reaction, I think, to realizing that all this has been going on. But um, so he, he's the victim in this for the most part. That's that's what I'm going into it seeing. And maybe the documentary will change my mind. But um, from the other perspective, the cat Fisher, that to me is almost a more interesting story because the levels of mental gymnastics that you have to be pulling with yourself and like the motivations behind really screwing with somebody like that is fascinating to me because I don't understand why somebody would ever do that. Do you feel like they were giving you a, a, a good reason for, do you think they were being honest with you guys in other words, or um, was it like kind of self-serving, self-protecting? Here's why I did it. I'm going to yeah. try to make myself look in the best light possible because there's no real good explanation from an ethical standpoint of why you would put somebody else through that. Sure. I think like one of the cool things about untold with volume one coming out previously, like the mouse of the palace and the trashers episode is I think like a lot of athletes and people our subjects got to see what the show is, which is really like a no holds bar. Like we're, I'm going to sit down and give you the raw unfiltered, like vulnerable truth, my story. And like the audience can make with it what they want. And so I think that's kind of like one of the main components that makes untold kind of like a really interesting series. Um, and so talking to Manti and Naya, look, this was like the most humiliating and painful thing that both of them went through in their entire lives. Like there's no reason for them to like really sit down and, and try and paint a picture that makes them look in a better light. I think really our 
motivation and interest was in like trying to understand like what led these two people to this point in time to the story. And I think one of the things that we found really fascinating is Naya, you know, the, the person behind it now identifies as a transgender woman. And when you really get into her story, you realize that like this was this online profile was really a deep, deep search for her identity and to figure out who she was. And um, I think it's something not a lot of people know, but they'll learn a lot more about in this episode. Um, and then with Manti, I think a lot of questions at the time were like, how could he not know? Like, how could you not know you had a fake girlfriend? Like, come on, what's going on? And I think one of the cool things about documentaries, you get to peel back the curtain and like really dive into a lot of stuff. So you really learn about Manti's background and the kind of strict religious upbringing he came up with in Hawaii, what that culture meant to him came from like a super like dominant kind of patriarchal family where you don't ask a lot of questions, which is kind of interesting. And then you learn like, just like how, what a fish out of water he was this freshman year coming from like this culture in Hawaii where he's comfortable. He knows everyone to like these stark stormy winters and in Indiana to play football. And really when you watch this, you find like, it's kind of two lost souls. You found each other online and then kind of end up having this like beautiful connection at first. And I think um, it's going to be really interesting for audiences to kind of experience what they experienced. So before I even knew you guys were coming on the show, I saw uh, a trailer for the new untold volume in this episode. And what I did was I was blogging about it. And because I was very interested in the story because, you know, there was a lot of loose ends with that story. And while blogging for that, I did some research back to uh, some of the Barstool Sports articles back when the story originally broke. Gotcha. And being able to read what people thought in that moment, our uh, boss, Stuhl Presidente, he wrote the article and basically his take on it at the time was that Manti Teo was making up this whole story about his girlfriend dying and with his grandmother to help him win the Heisman. So, you know, looking back and seeing how much we didn't know back then and how many people still actually may think that because it just has been swept on the rug and hasn't really been addressed since. I think this documentary is going to, you know, open a lot of people's eyes to how exactly this could happen. Totally. Yeah. And like, there are like very complicated, like timeline issues with this story. It's one of those like, and, and, and to be clear, like in the middle of the Heisman campaign, this is a championship football game. Notre Dame already lost to Alabama is when like Manti starts to find out like, this dead girlfriend is alive again and like my god like this stuff isn't quite adding up and he he talks openly about that in the documentary like listen and he struggles with the decision he made um which is like do i just grapple the horns now and wrestle with this massive story like or do i wait until like things die down and i think like at the end of the day you're talking about a kid who's 20 years old and he has a massive nfl draft coming up um where career defining money is on the line and manti has agents and managers and family in his ear so um all to say like it's just like an incredibly like complicated situation that i don't know um i i don't know how you handle that situation i mean it's like an honest an honest question but but definitely like and, and the documentary gets into this which is like notre dame and and, and the story of manti teo there's a strong element of like myth building in this story it's really like a theme of fantasy that kind of goes through both naya's fantasy and the fantasy she's playing out as manti's girlfriend and manti as this like unbelievable golden child of notre dame college football front page of sports illustrated his grandma died what a remarkable season Notre Dame had that year going all the way to the championship football game. People were rooting for him to win the, the Heisman. All those are like things that, that are uh, that are themes in our documentary that that we ask Manti to wrestle with. So so it's all definitely it. Yeah, I can't imagine being a kid. I mean, granted, he's legally an adult at the time, but right. in college you have all these different people in your ears, especially somebody as high profile as Manti was at the time where you've got, you know, people from your from Notre Dame telling you, OK, you have to do this, this and this. You have these sponsors that you have to, like, help out. You have, uh, you know, just all these different people in your ears telling you about what you need to do. And it's a very confusing age for anybody. And to have this happen on a national media level probably fucked with his head quite a bit. Do you guys think that uh, is he is he still a little bit guarded because he has to be distrustful of everybody right now? He still has to have you know, some sort of uh, uh, trust yeah. issue. 
I think like we got Manti at a really great time, which is like his NFL career is winding down. And he's like, I get asked about this constantly. It's still like not a week goes by where people don't bring it up. Someone wants to talk about it with me. And so I think we got him in a, in a really interesting time and place where he's like, look, I just like, let me just talk. Let me just tell my whole story, like warts and all. Like I want to get this out and out of me one time and give one definitive interview on this the good, the bad, the ugly, and people can decide how they feel about it. And he really gives like this almost remarkable monologue at the end of the whole doc where it's just this unfiltered, like raw emotion of everything this story means to him, how it has affected him since. And it's a seriously powerful moment that I think audiences are going to walk away with a really interesting insight into how this affected Manti and how it affects them even in, in, in today. Yeah, I mean, it sounds fascinating. Congratulations on, on getting the interview, too, because like you said, I think if you were to ask any sports documentary maker, like, what do you want? What story do you want to do a documentary on? This is probably like across the board. People is number one or two. So uh, you talked about how, how long the process was. What was that like building enough rapport with him where he felt like he was in a position to trust you. I would imagine that Malice at the Palace, which was fantastic, by the way. Um, Thank if you. you. If you haven't watched that, go back and watch it. Great story. Uh, you guys did a great job with it. I would imagine having a track record and having something that you could put out and be like, look what we did with these people. Look what we did this, yeah. with this person specifically. Like, this is how we treat yeah. people. Did that yeah. is that like the major differentiator? Yeah, absolutely. And like so much credit goes to our directors on this episode, uh, to Ryan Duffy and Tony like um we had like started building relationship with naya and like tony and ryan like really um worked with 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 uh with manti to build that 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 relationship full of trust and listen it's not like a necessarily easy ask this isn't like it's easy when you want to go interview people at length about the time they scored the game winning touchdown or hit the three point shot that won them the nba championship not so easy asking them like well we're going to talk about a, a pretty painful and and a moment in your life that had like a pretty traumatic impact on your life. But yeah, I think like untold has created a bit of like a, and honestly like podcasts in general too, long form sit down conversations, this kind of world that we all work in so to degree has like shown athletes um, the benefit of talking at length in full context about the things that happened to them in their entire life. And so the promise we make them is like, listen, we're going to ask for days from you, two, three, four interview days. It's a big time commitment, but just know on our end, it takes us like two years to make these things. And like, we'll put a team in place and we'll have everyone like work on these documentaries day in, day out to make them as good as they possibly can be. And so I think that that's like a pitch that resonates with like a lot of athletes. They realize the hard work that goes into it and they're usually like on board from that, from that moment on. Yeah, I think you're right. I think podcasting and, and documentaries, they, they have been a, a net benefit to athletes that want to get their stories out there the only time they ever get in trouble is if they go on a podcast and then somebody like takes a one sentence clip out of what they said and then they make like a quote card and then put that quote card out online completely devoid of any content. Like I remember the first time we interviewed Adam Morrison on Pardon My Take and he said like kind of jokingly like I, I have an apocalypse bunker. And so we made one of those quotes because we thought it was funny. And the next thing we knew it was like massive national news and we right. felt bad. We're like, we weren't trying to fuck you on that. But then it was good for us because then we get to have him back on and be like, now you get to dispel the rumor about the apocalypse bunker on our podcast. Yeah. We double dip for the ratings. But yeah, I think it's been good. Um, Big T, you have any questions for him? Yeah, so this this story is obviously a little more sports adjacent, but it, in, it involves sports. Y'all mentioned Mouse at the Palace. Y'all also made Battered Bastards of Baseball, which is one of my favorite documentaries I've ever watched. Uh, so what, what do y'all find about sports and how they relate to people that make good stories and documentaries like that? Yeah, I think like the interesting thing about athletes is like they don't care what you think about them. They don't care what your opinions are of them. They've been like raised and trained from a very young age for a singular purpose, which is like to be the best that they can be at this one athletic pursuit, you know? And I think like it makes for like a very raw and vulnerable interview where like they're not second guessing how someone going to interpret this, how some, what's someone going to think about me. It's just like, here's my story. Like you deal with it. If you like me, you don't like me. I don't really give a shit. Like this is kind of what I experienced and what I went through. And so I think like, we've just found like a lot of interesting conversations talking to athletes about that. I think Mac and I also were like, uh, 
loved sports growing up, weren't very good at sports, but like we loved the competition. We love like, I love the simplicity of like uh, competition. Uh, one person's going to win at the end of the day and um, it's less cerebral, which I think is kind of like a really cool outlet. And we've always just had like a massive passion for sports. And um, I think we just find like a lot of interesting off field, off ice, off court stories too, that, that these athletes find themselves in. So I think that combination of all those things is kind of where we find like really, really thrilling stories. And you guys don't have any relationships with the leagues themselves, right? It's completely separate. Like Netflix had, I don't think they have a partnership with the NFL. At least they don't have a partnership with baseball. Have you had any pushback from anyone representing any of the leagues that you've covered being like, Hey, if you could frame this or take this one part out, or we really don't like you talking about this one yeah. issue, no one's pushed back. It's been like incredible. And I really think untold is possible. Like, I mean, we, 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 we've been, like we've been making documentaries for Netflix since the very first one we did, Batter Bastards of Baseball. But I really don't think that this series is like possible to go do the Tim Donahue story, for instance, like at other places. And to us, it's like what allows Untold to be special and what attracts us as filmmakers is like being able to like as cliche as it sounds like exercise your fundamental first amendment rights to like be critical of situations to add analysis to like not worry about really stepping on toes that doesn't mean like we're reckless and we're doing like hit pieces left and right we're just trying to kind of call shots as we see them and make like interesting stories tell interesting stories but um as far as like these being like necessarily authorized by um the leagues or really sanctioned by even the storytellers themselves like all all final decisions rest in our hands um and we wouldn't really have it any other way to be honest yeah i think that's the best way to do it i've, I've always thought that a great documentary or for a while i thought i was going to write a musical about this team but a great sports documentary would be uh the florida gators with tim tebow riley yeah. cooper aaron hernandez the pouncy twins cam newton cam newton percy harvin and urban meyer ryan lochte was on campus at the time and dan bilzerian yes. was on campus all at the same time <laughs> yeah. down in gainesville there's some yeah. there's some shit that you can get into with that one. But yeah, congratulations on making this one. Billy, do you have another question? Uh, last question. Huge fan of crimes and penalties. I think that was my favorite from volume <laughs> one. Um, definitely check it out if you haven't all of Untold Stories volume one. But ha you guys also did Wild Wild Country, um, which is a documentary about a guru. Uh, but have you ever seen the documentary now? Uh, spoof of it. And it, what did you guys think of that? Because I thought it was, it was, it was awesome. Batshit Valley, I think, was, yeah, the name, yeah. <laughs> was the name of the spoof. And obviously, we're huge documentary fans. So we're huge fans of documentary now. And I remember driving down the 405 and I saw a billboard of Owen Wilson yeah. dressed as Osho and it said Batshit Valley. And I was like, what the hell is going on? It was a trip. And we watched it. We laughed our asses off. Those guys yeah, are genius. Exactly. One of my, like, to the degree that we've had a career, the fact that Documentary Now did that was just like, it's such a, it feels like a crowning achievement of sorts. <laughs> but Preston and Bill Hader are so goddamn funny what they do. And like, we we shot like a lot of aerial for like Wild Wild Country, which you like see in a lot of docs. But dude, they matched some of our shit so goddamn well that it like absolutely like tickled me to death. And like the score and the music, like they did a phenomenal, like it, it they're not just making fun of it and and teasing it, which like they did, and that was hilarious. But like the actual craft behind like what they did is like so admirable. Uh, it was like it was truly just like so fun to watch that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, the uh, the drone yeah. footage and documentaries has become a real godsend, <laughs> I would imagine, for you guys. It's like so so easy to get good establishing shots that just uh, that set things up nicely. But I know you have another uh, commitment right now, so we're gonna let you go. But Everybody out there, go check it out. Untold Volume 2. It's The Girlfriend Who Didn't Exist. It's a two-parter. Uh, as you mentioned, it's directed by Ryan Duffy and Tony Vinuku. 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 Okay, check it out. It comes out Tuesday, August 16th, 2022 on Netflix. It's going to be great. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to watch all the documentaries that you guys put out. You do fantastic work. So it's Chapman and McLean Way. Thank you guys for joining us on Macrodosing. Is there anything else you guys want to say? No, we're super excited. We got three more episodes also coming out after the girlfriend who didn't exist. We got, you know, the Tim Donahue NBA referee scandal oh. coming out August 30th, August 23rd. We're doing the rise and fall of and one street ball, which oh. is a really, really interesting look and in what happened there. And 
September 6th, we've got uh, probably one of the greatest underdog stories in the history of sport on the 1983 America's Cup yacht race, which yes. is uh, maybe lesser known, but going to be a wild one. You guys, <laughs> I mean, awesome. I, I don't know how you guys figure out which documentaries to make and what subjects, but you <laughs> pick perfect ones for me. Like, <laughs> if you, I'll say if you're 37 years old listening to this, these are right up your alley. Like, this is exactly what I want to see. I'm so pumped to watch all of these. <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys oh. very much for joining us. Good luck with everything. Thanks, thanks, for thanks, 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 guys. Super fun. Thanks. All right, bye, guys. Does anybody, uh, anybody got anything else, man? We'll no. wrap this thing up. It's been a beautiful conversation. Get to get to the interview with Chapman and McLean Way, the guys who made the Manti Teo documentary. I'm very excited to watch that. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah. My girlfriend Same. has no idea. I sent her the trailer. I was like, "This this thing's going to be awesome," and she had no idea any of the story. Oh, I at wish all. I could read. And I was like, "Oh, and then we're memory. definitely what watching a, it." Yeah. What a story. Yeah, All right, but, Most definitely. I'm, I'm definitely going to check that thing out, man. Yeah, thank you, Large and KB, for coming and pretending to be PFT and Billy for the day. Yeah, thank yeah, you guys man. for having me. Yeah. That was PFT. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, always welcome back on the plot. This is this is, this is is fun. Big fan of y'all. Yes, Large, yeah. you my guy, man. Thanks, baby. We'll get to a fight, but I got to be honest with you. If you're not going to dress up, you're not coming. Fuck you. You, gotta dress uh, up for gonna, me. If, you can't dress up. You're not going to a fight with me. That's what I'm saying. You gotta... I put on. I put. I put on some chucks. Oh, yeah, some chucks. Excellent. No, dust off. Or you we take him to a rough and rowdy. Something with seams. You know what I mean? Mm. Think about it. Think about it. Yeah, I yeah. think about it, man. You could take me out my comfort zone, baby. <laughs> but then I would appreciate it. Um, wow. y'all want to plug anything? As usual, y'all go ahead and plug whatever you got to plug, man. Twisted history every week. Uh, I do Barstool Finance every week. Podfather. Do a lot of shit. NASCAR and uh, boxing. And what do you got? August 8th today, I'll be on, I'll come on every August 8th and I'll bring the topic next time. Okay. Love that. Next August 8th. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Well, Start the be it a weekday or a weekend. Yeah. Coincidentally, today is my mother's birthday, August 8th. Happy so birthday. We could all wish my mom a happy birthday. I 100%. appreciate that. Queen. For sure. Bless. Yeah, that's my dog. So uh, now we appreciate mm -hmm. you, man. Um, yeah. Just like us, subscribe us, all that shit on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We almost, we if we get to 100,000, Big T. Is doing drugs live. It's gonna be so oh, fun. Shit, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he gonna do drugs. It's gonna be amazing. All right, y'all. Love you. Peace out. See you Thursday. Get the merch. Holla. <laughs>